YouTube, it's Brian Phillips. We've got the P51 and the NX8, finally. It's so awesome. It's everything the NX6 was and more. One channel more. Two. <laughs> and then there's some extra buttons. We're gonna go over that in kind of painfully detailed uh, Brian Phillips glory. So if you stick around for that, you can. It does come with a lanyard, which is nice. This is the one that comes with it. Yep. I had been using the lanyard that was on my DX18 before. So if you saw the way that that looked, this thing is a little bit bigger. I'm not a big fan of that. That's one of the only few things I haven't really liked about it. Everything else is exactly what I wanted. Been very happy with it. This knob is just like in the DX18. If you've got muscle memory to reach up and, and adjust the knob, it's great. You've got your trim tabs, uh, trim buttons up here, which is really nice. And you have an additional button here, okay? So honestly, guys, if you're spending 310 bucks, just spend the extra 40 bucks and get this because they come with the same size battery. And if you want the bigger battery, I'm sporting a 6,000 milliamp pack. That's like 32 bucks. So you're less than 400 bucks out the door. You've got eight channels. This is true eight channels. It's not like you get an extra hidden channel like you did on the NX6. So far, we're very happy with it. And uh, we will go ahead and do some flying with the P51 June night, gorgeous plane. This is gonna be the second time that I've reviewed it myself and I reviewed it once with Esteban's P51. And then we did one more time when it was the, what was it, the Blondie? Yeah. So we love this 1.2 meter. We never reviewed that. That was like before we... No, we did. Oh, we did? Yeah, we did. And oh. then we upgraded the ESC. That was before Horizon admitted that you could put a 4S in there. Which, by the way, we're flying on 4S, 2200, 30C Gen 2 pack. Beautiful pack. Uh, telemetry on this. Let's see what we've got. Okay, so we have the gyro, all the AAS, 3X stuff, flight modes and all that junk but we do not have a receiver, well, excuse me, we have a receiver uh, pack voltage, but we do not have the nominal cell voltage because there's not an avian receiver in here or an avian ESC, which would pass through cell voltages and it would pass through nominal voltage. So if there's a complaint, that's it for now. And this is the AR631 now upgraded from the AR636B most recently and previously AR636A. So. You basically get the newer AS3X technology with safe select, but you got that on the Air 636B as far as you're concerned, because it's not like you can do forward programming on the 631 on Bina flies because they haven't locked out. Okay, so without further ado, take off flaps. We're gonna do a little taxiing here. This plane is excellent. You're gonna get a very safe five minutes out of this flight. So we have a timer set to five minutes. Look how stinking gorgeous that thing is. And by the way, folks, if you have not flown a Warbird, um, the P-51 is, is, is not a bad place to start. It's also maybe not the absolute easiest one to do. So if you want like the P-39's got tricycle, it makes it a lot easier. T-28's probably the easiest. Okay, rolling it in. Beautiful. Okay, cycled the gear there. about 50% throttle going through the opening in the trees here. That's 50% throttle. Look at that gorgeous thing. Full throttle. On 4S, she's got darn near unlimited vertical. Full speed. I just love the way this thing looks. Okay, full rudder and a roll out of the throttle, obviously. Feels like we got a little bit of a balance issue on the prop, possibly. Nothing that can't be fixed with a little fingernail polish trick. We're gonna show you guys in a later video. It's also gonna beautify the tips. See how fast it'll go? Now watch this, guys. Okay, full landing flaps coming out from a full stall and we're slowing down. I'm gonna show you the full flight envelope of this thing. Look how well behaved it is, guys. 50% throttle, probably 40% throttle there. Now watch this, full throttle and climbing already. Isn't that just incredible? Whoa, watch yourself. <laughs> that was kind of crazy. I induced a high speed stall there on that maneuver. You'll notice the flaps are fully deployed. The reason I showed you that is because power saves lives in airplanes. <laughs> That was the Eagle Killing Zone, F-15 Eagle. 
just absolutely gorgeous. We need a little bit of elevator correction because I am pulling that stick. Now this is a trick you can do. Get it in level flight mode and you can look at your percentage. Right now, if I go to monitor mode, I can figure out the percentage. Of course, I can't find my monitor mode while I'm flying, but I can tell it's about 15%. Okay, out of the flaps, full speed. There's a bird challenging me to a duel. No, bird gave up. He knew he was gonna lose. Okay, we're going under for a low pass. Up over the tree line. We're gonna roll into a final. As you can see, she gets around just fine. Nice, rock solid performance. Horizon did a great job with this plane every time they put it out. Even the 1.1 was good from what I understand. I didn't have it myself. Anybody who's seen a P-51 in person can attest to how beautiful they are. Okay, full landing flaps coming in. I about rode that to the edge. Okay, gear coming down. Gear going back up, beautiful. Okay, so we're gonna try to take a landing here. Full landing flaps deployed. Now you don't glide in a warbird, so I'm way out there just to show you. I can get out there over the road. I'm full up elevator there. So what that tells me is that I need a little bit more elevator or I need to move that battery back a little bit. I'm okay with either solution. I think the mechanical adjustment would be very beneficial. Okay, full landing flaps. We'll just go down the runway this time. Take off flaps only just so we can uh, reserve a little bit more elevator. Full landing flaps now. Relax into it, then drop the tail. Okay, so throttle cuts on. I wanna talk about what happened there. When you're going along and you have no elevator left, part of the reason that's a problem is because I don't have enough correction or I have corrected in the wrong direction. You see the elevator? It's moving down. So we were correcting in the right direction. Actually, you know what? I was having to pull up on the stick, so I'm gonna just get rid of that correction. I'm gonna to go to zero as instructed by the manual, okay? Then I'm gonna come out of the flaps, throttle cuts off, full up elevator. See that? Grass ops doing okay, it's not maybe perfect. That thing looks so gorgeous. Guys, we love this. This P-51 is a great plane. Okay, take off flaps, here we go. We'll just relax into a little bit of throttle there. Just drive it out like a car. Full throttle. 4S is gonna be a little annoyed with us right now. This is a Gen 2 pack. We are going to torture it for you guys out of the throttle, into the throttle. Beautiful clouds for filming. How you doing, camera crew? Good. Full throttle again. Cornhole. The P-51 does not execute cornholes very good. I feel like you made that up. I did. Take off flaps. Gear coming down. Oh, that looks so sweet. Okay, full landing flaps this time. No correction and she feels really, really good, folks. Now, I would be lying if I told you that thing was hard to fly because it is one of the easier warbirds. Throttle cuts on. Look how big these flaps are, folks. 
throttle cuts on and tested. Look how big those things are. That's at 90%. You can run those a little bit further, by the way. So if you decide to do that, you may need to do a little bit of elevator correction, but I can tell you one thing. I would like to have a little bit more elevator on this plane because when you come in with full flap deployment, you pretty much don't have enough to do anything but keep it level, okay? So I don't like having the elevator all the way up and being out of elevator. I want more than I need. Um, then I can expo it to tame, out, uh, to tame it out. So for now, I'm really happy with the way it flies. Gorgeous plane, it's always been gorgeous. I've had such good luck with this plane. Wide flight envelope, super wide flight envelope. Have we tortured this battery enough? It's at two minutes 30. Pass. Okay, so I have the... let's go ahead and torture it some more. Okay. Let's go torture it. Take off flaps. Full throttle. You'll notice I got off the ground there in no time. Full throttle. Guys, these Gen 2 packs are just wonderful. You know what I didn't ever test? Safe. They're safe, not even looking, not even looking. Okay, so just so you know, they're safe. There's your limited bank angle. Oh man, that looks so good. This plane safe is good, but it's not as good as knowing how to fly on your own. Unless you're still learning. Okay, I'm landing. Okay. Vampire killing zone, bringing it in. Okay, so what have we learned? The elevator is a little bit lacking in the up setting. So I would probably say that there's two ways to resolve that. You can move the control horn so that it is actually pointed up and then you can mechanically adjust it out. That'll give you more on one side than the other. Or you can just move it in one hole from the outside. Right now it's on the outside, you wanna go up one. Is it on the all the way outside, Cam mm, Crew? I don't remember. So if, if, if I was building this again, which you're gonna be watching me build it in just a few minutes. So throttle cuts on and tested, by the way. Landing gear retracts, very good on this. Bogey's very strong, love this plane. Yeah, we are in the full outside hole on the elevator. Okay, so just out of curiosity, since I haven't tortured it quite enough yet, let's go ahead and see if we can pop this off. Camera crew, can you, can you pop that out of there with your fingernail by chance? I can't quite get my finger in there today. Okay, perfect. As long as I don't break a nail. Yep. I did not. You did not? Awesome. Did not. Okay, so I'm going into the second hole. Ooh, sounds like fun. Hmm. So we're just gonna slide that in real quick. That should give us a little teeny bit more authority, but it's probably gonna throw everything out of whack. So just for you guys, cause I care so much about you and less about my batteries. Being a little bit, little janky on my controls there because I'm trying to be nice to my battery. 50% <laughs> throttle there, no flaps. Oh, that thing looks so glorious. Okay, let's check it. Oh, buddy, she flies great now, still. I don't feel like there was any detriment at all with that elevator correction. That's full speed pass, no oscillation. Cornhole's way better now. That's really <laughs> what I was after, guys. If you can't cornhole your P51, you're doing it wrong. Okay, so full landing flaps, gear coming out. Remember guys, you gotta keep moving a plane. It's gonna act like it can do anything because this plane will make you feel like a pro. Oh, I'm only about triple my time now, right? Probably. There's full throttle. Let's see if it'll go unlimited. Yep, pretty much. Guys, this plane is just a joy to fly. Okay, up and over into the bowl and then down and around. Okay, you good? Mm -hmm. Little bit of waggle there on the rudder. Definitely not the elevator. There's our power. Okay. Flaps out, take off only. We are gonna be dead sticking this. I'm gonna stay out of the throttle to reserve some power. I'm actually gonna come out of the flaps, give it a little bit of juice here just to make sure we make it. Okay, take off flaps only, full landing flaps. I know I'm in deep enough. And stick her down, use the rudder, give it some punches to keep it going straight and throttle cuts on. We have used up that pack. Do you, do you care how dead it is or are we just- Oh, it's totally dead. dead. We're, tech, we're checking it. We're checking it this way though. You ready? 
<laughs> that's when you know you killed it. Guys, I'm at six minutes 53 on a five minute timer. So that was probably about 10 minutes of flight time on one 2200 4S. And I was not being nice to it. So all I can say is Gen 2 packs are working out well so far. Now, would a Gen 1 pack do the same thing? Yeah, pretty much. Why would you get a Gen 2? It's more expensive. Because you don't have a balance lead. It's one less thing to plug in. It's one less thing to go wrong. To be honest with you, I haven't been fully sold on the Gen 2s yet, but I'm getting there. Um, I realize it's a big difference in cost. So I'm I'm, I'm struggling to, to balance the benefit to cost ratio, okay? The charging process is It's very easy. Easier. <laughs> Thirteen point two. Come it on! It won't even go. It won't. <laughs> That's yeah. That dead. <laughs> I've noticed on these smart packs, one of the cells will sag. It's usually the last cell. I don't know why that is. It could be something about the the circuitry in the smart chip. Mm. Which, by the way, the first time you crash a plane and you get rid of the battery, very safely uh, separate out the circuit so you can look at it. It's pretty cool. It's very small. I mean, it's about the size of your, my thumbnail. It's very small, maybe double that. And uh, it's very light and not too hot either. So no. guys, all I can say is, the other thing is if you don't have an XBC 100 battery checker yet, it's one of the essential tools for every yeah. toolbox. Even if you're not using smart packs, excellent tool. Of course, you're gonna have to have adapters unless you're running all EC3 connectors, which I pity your soul because I hate EC3 <laughs> connectors. The IC, three connector, the IC5 connector, they're perfect. The EC3s suck. I hated them. I could never get them to plug in. The, the EC5s were okay, but the EC3s were terrible. Um, so without further ado, guys, we really appreciate you stopping in, checking out this new equipment. The NX8, I believe it's definitely worth a couple extra bucks. There's no doubt in my mind. Gen 2, not sure yet. Still trying to make up my mind. But definitely the NX8. If you guys have an NX6 budget, think about the extra 40 bucks. It's only getting you one extra channel because the NX6 is seven. You can fly most of the new bind and fly stuff on the NX6 and you'll probably be okay for a long time. But I bet you'll get a couple extra years out of this if you buy that. Um, or just get the IX20 and just throw caution in the wind. But you're gonna wanna make sure you have hotel reservations. <laughs> I was gonna say. Yeah. You might wanna clear that one. Yeah, no, or don't tell her how much it cost. Would be way smarter. <laughs> well and don't blame me we'll talk about that's that. that's all i'm later. gonna say <laughs> all right come back for more guys and stick around check the link in the description we'll link to the p51 the packs of course the nx lineup we'll just do the nx lineup so if you go with the six that's fine check it out for yourself you may find out that the 40 bucks is just too much it's it's just you don't want to cross that bridge i understand but you're going to cross that bridge shortly so just trust me uh it you know if you're thinking about garden tools and you want us to review a rake, you know, a rako, excuse me, a rake. We'll be reviewing the rake soon. It's a red rake and it's about two meters long and it's beautiful. So, I mean, we don't have a link to it yet because we can't do that, but there's always a generic link if you want to follow it for if you're into gardening tools. So anyway, that's all I'm going to say. Come back for more and stick around for the build and radio setup and the review on the NX-8. YouTube, it's Brian Phillips. We have a box to open here. You may have seen this before. It feels like deja vu. We're gonna cut it open right after we go over this thing. Into the AM, send us some shirts. We're excited to work with these guys. So far, we've been wearing the shirts for a couple weeks and they work great, except for when you're putting a lapel mic on <laughs> and then they kind of don't work so good. But anyway, their whole shtick is that they want you to stay inspired and uh, wear their shirts. So anyway, check the link in the description below. I've been really happy with them and I always have tons of problems with stupid neck curling on my shirts and I have problems with the kittens attacking my camera crew that are pregnant and no, have wait. lots of The cat really. is pregnant, not the, the cat. camera crew. Oh goodness That gracious. was really that was confusing. Scary. Yes, oh. this cat. Okay, so before we unbox, because we know you guys keep asking for cat stuff, we're gonna try to catch this cat holding still because you can see the kittens within moving. You, yeah, you could see it right it's there. It's so don't cool. See it. You can see your belly move. But anyway, all right, guys. Sales pitch over. Now the better sales pitch. Yes. Okay. 
I know some of you guys are thinking, Brian, we already know what's in the box. We already know what's in the box because we saw this thing just a few months ago, but it's so good we're doing it again. The P51 Mustang 1.2. I know what you're also thinking, but didn't you just do the 1.5 second thoughts video? Yes. <laughs> now the reason we did that, and the reason we're doing this, is because when we brought, whoa, whoo, scared me. That did sound bad. Jeez. There, go get in the box, Kelly. Mm, look at this, so beautiful. The reason I wanted to show you this is because the June night, is this still the June night? Mm -hmm. The June night or the 1.2 meter was one of my first planes. I think it might've been my second or third. My second or third, there was a chair blowing on the, the deck. Oh, we should show the people at home. Oops. Look at the uh, fan that's not on up there. Mm -hmm. If that was only a wind generator, we would not have to pay energy bills. No. So anyway, this was probably my second plane, except I had it in the 1.2 meter Blondie with AS3X and no safe. It was a little scary for a beginner. I just want to let you know, this is way easier to fly than the 1.5. It's also, in my opinion, it's more fun to fly because it's less scary to fly. The 1.5 is awesome, but you have to be quite a bit more skilled. And there is a ton of P factor on that and any Warbird that has a tail dragger and uh, very, very beautiful scale retracts, especially. Also, this thing is a gorgeous flying plane. It has safe select and AS3X. This is the bind and fly basic. Oh, as mentioned, it has retracts, which you'll see. The 1.5 meter has a retractable tail wheel, which is something fantastic to behold. However, it's a little squirrely on the ground. This one seems to behave a little bit better on the ground. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through unbox, build, and radio setup, which is why we're doing this. <laughs> Ta-da! So we have the NX6. The NX6 was awesome. We loved it and we're gonna continue to love it. It has been great. How many planes do we have in this thing? Let's turn it on and tell the people. Seven, I think it's 19. 19. Oh, okay. Okay, so most recently we flew the Pilatus system setup. Oops, sorry, model select. We're up to 17. So the UMX A10 was the last one that went into this. And what we're gonna do is we are going to spend a little bit of time going into the NX8, which is awesome. And you're like, but Brian, I just bought the NX6. Don't worry. This is a seven channel transmitter and it's gonna get done 99% of the stuff you need to do. But there are a few things that might be helpful if you're using this NX-8 for like reverse thrust reasons. So anyway, the reason that we're opening this NX-8 now with the P-51 is because the P-51 is awesome. And we just recently reviewed it, but we, we just wanna make sure that you guys get every glorious drip of joy out of watching this get set up. I know. So anyway, uh, without further ado, we also have this case to show you. For those of you who actually uh, go to the club and, uh, you know, if you're hanging out at the club all the time, the <laughs> RC club, then you may want to have a way to transport your transmitters. Now, you're thinking to yourself, but Brian, I have one of those little radioactive transmitter cases, which I've had too, and they're very nice. But this is a multi-transmitter case. Oh yeah. And if you ever walk up to one of these and you hear it ticking, just run the other way. <laughs> now, I did find it interesting that the way this, this thing was shipped, okay? Cause it was shipped like this. And they shipped in this gigantic box with another set of inserts. Okay, so for whatever that means, see this? They put foam around the handle to protect it from itself. So that's pretty nice. This is a beautiful 2.4 gigahertz DSM technology. Okay. Well, there's a key on there. That's awesome. Oh, wow. Look at that fancy dance. That's pretty cool. Mm, smell it. Smell it's delicious. Smell it. it. Smell it. It smells like whatever that stuff is. It smells is. like new foam, oh. which I think is awesome. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab this thing, the DX18, and see how it fits. Obviously, we're going to be putting in 
the NX. There's ample pocket clearance. Oh, yes. Oh, it doesn't hit the trim buttons. Show them that. It doesn't hit the trim buttons. Yes. That is awesome. And then you can slide little USB chargers and lots of little tools. And then big, gigantic 7,000 milliamp 6S packs. Gen 2. I wonder what those might be used for. See this? Look at that. Oh, yeah, you can fit a crap load of batteries in there. Geez, that's awesome. So let's see what this one looks like. This is, I believe, what's used for the twin transmitters. So, like, if you've got yours and your kids or your buddies or your wives, all seven of you, <laughs> see this? That bring them to the flight field, I should say. So I get my own transmitter. Look at that. That's pretty awesome, actually. Now that is pretty nice. Look how high it is, too. Yeah. Yeah, it covers. But see, these ones fold. Right. So you got even better transportability. So that being said, I can say with experience, when we transported the DX18, we we have a traverse. We have a 2011 traverse, and there was a spot where we would have to move the center console back, and it would rest right there. And I thought to myself, self, I wonder if I got in a car accident, what would happen to this thing? <laughs> and it would probably not be very good. So alternatively, if you have to ship your transmitter, this would also give you another means by which to ship your transmitter so that it can be actually protected. So that's pretty awesome. And of course there is evidently a key somewhere somehow I don't see it anywhere but it might be like on the bottom let's check and see if it's under the foam so that's pretty good let's see if it let's see if it holds the batteries huh, that's pretty good anti-slip felt like they shift a little bit that's not too bad okay well, and there's only one in there so if you had them packed oh, yeah. in there nice but that'll keep it let's see what it looks like with the lanyard hooked up because I do fly with a lanyard Okay, so I've got the lanyard. I typically pull down on the throttle a little bit and then I go around. Wonder if it'll still go. Mm. We may have to do that a little different. Yeah, it looks like, looks like it, it's gonna catch. It's gonna catch. So I'd have to renegotiate that a little bit. You see how I'm flipping switches? For me, it's a big no-no if you flip switches. So you may have to undo your lanyard depending on how you strap it in there. So that's pretty awesome. And if you do use a case, definitely check your switch conditions. Make sure all your switches are where you want them. Throttle cut, okay, then you're safe to go, okay? I was hearing this, I, I hear lots of horror stories. So don't do things like cutting people up on the flight line because you bound your, you put your radio into bind mode while somebody else was putting the bind plug into their plane Thus, test, don't test with your throttle, test with your ailerons or something, okay? Because I just heard a story of a guy who ended up cutting somebody down the line. So you gotta be careful about that stuff, guys. These planes are generally safe, unless we make them unsafe, so be careful. All right, so this is pretty awesome. I'm happy with the way that that all goes together. Um, one thing I noticed about the NX6 that I didn't necessarily think was a big factor is that it is quite a bit lighter than this, hmm. okay? And it doesn't seem like a big deal, but there is a certain amount of pilot fatigue, if you wanna <laughs> call it that. It's minor, but there is a certain amount of fatigue that you get from holding transmitters. That's why people use lanyards. So let's pull this thing out. So the lighter weight will be nice when you start putting a bunch of stuff in a case like this. So this whole insert comes out, and I believe, oh. ah, yes, there, there are keys. Okay, as I suspected. Look at this. It's all lined. It's lined in here. With the, is that like velvet or what do you call no, that? No, it's like it's like foam. No, it's foam. But it's it's really but, good. Yeah, it's nice. It's sturdy. So I'm gonna use it for the double case. Okay. Like this. Sweet. And then I'll take off this because I'm gonna use that here in a little bit. We'll just drop this down in here. That's pretty sweet. Let's see if it does too. Oh yeah, perfect. 
And I don't know if you guys can tell, but you're missing all the trim switches. So that's really nice. You don't have to sit there and trim that out because this doesn't look like that big a deal to do until you have to do it yourself. And that's actually kind of hard to do. So that being said, happy with that. Came with some anti, um, you know, like the silica gel to catch the moisture if you would pick up a little bit of moisture. And I have kits like this that I use to carry around my test weights for my professional day-to-day -day job. And they are very nice. Look at that fancy dance. Hmm. That's pretty cool. cool. So excited to share that with you. Uh, it's definitely something that will come in handy at times. And if you're into that sort of thing, might be something to consider. We'll link to that as well as the NX8 and the NX line. Well, actually, we'll link to the whole lineup so you can just pick what you want. That being said, we are going to open this when we get to the radio setup part. But let's get the plane built. All right, so we built this recently. So it's definitely not a hard plane to go together. This is a bind and fly basic. Uh, so if you're new to the channel, first of all, welcome. We're just about ready to hit 100,000 subscribers, which is super exciting for us. Megan and I, my camera crew, have been working super hard on our channel for years now. Hey, look, the manual's not folded. Thanks, Horizon. <laughs> this is also being re-released with the latest and greatest AR-631, I believe. So we will confirm that shortly. Um, the AR-637, or excuse me, the AR-636A and B, first revision A, of course, would have been used for the Blondie, which was a red tail and a red nose. Mm -hmm. This one is a June Knight. Of course, it's got silver. And then, uh, is that silver and then olive drab green on the nose? Mm -hmm. I actually loved I love the color scheme on that Blondie card. Yep. Okay, so One we'll, of my favorite planes. Yep. Of Camera all time. Love, the, love that. And to be honest, I was a, a lot worse pilot at the time. Okay, so really well packed. If you get a Horizon plane that's not well packed, you got the weird one because they are some of the best packed planes in the industry. Nice, nice prop in there. Comes painted for you, which is nice. I like this, it helps for safety. That's a 1058, of course, that's a scale detail too. Kind of wish they came painted on the back too. Because when you're the pilot, many times you're behind the plane. And it is nice to see that because it'll save somebody from getting cut someday. Two things that happen in RC. People are always thinking, oh, you're gonna hit somebody, you're gonna crash into a car. Of course those things happen, but it's pretty rare. What happens is people cut their hands on the props. That's the, probably the number one accident. And then lipos, you have to be careful with lipos. Because those are the two things you really need to worry about. Everything else, people just jump out of the way most of the time. Seriously, that's what happens. <laughs> All right, airplanes. Oh, look at that beautiful dihedral. This plane has such a wide flight envelope. And look at this super, I love this, so detailed. And these gear are not soft at all, but they work really nice. And there's a little snap ring on there that holds the wheel and they got really smooth action to them. Just all the surface, of course, got a beautiful, huge flap on there. And then a piece of tape here. By the way, guys, this is why you don't tape on a finished part. Watch this, watch this, gonna for sure, yep, see? Pulls off the paint. Not a big deal, this is gonna be totally covered up, so I just wanted to show you that real quick. Because if you put tape on your plane, even a masking tape, it's gonna probably take that finish off. Mm -hmm. So just plan on it. All right. So continuing the unboxing, of course, you got the manual, some of the best manuals in the industry. Most of the time they're in English. <laughs> they're actually in multi -ling languages. So what is it like English, French, German? Yeah, I think Sorry. it's just those three. Okay. Then we have the tail feathers. When you get the tail feathers out, always make sure that they line up. So you got a left and a right. One time I got an AT7 and I got two lefts or two rights. So I ended up with the spare. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so little plug here, little plug here. Foam to protect the foam from the foam. That's always good. Okay, grab the beautiful airplane. Guys, this P51 is just something to behold. I love the way this plane looks. This is one of my favorite pilots and it doesn't, it doesn't have to be the absolute most detailed pilot, but I just feel like size to relative look from, you know, six feet test 
It's just one of the better looking pilots. The nose isn't screwed up. The face has the right dimensions and proportions. There's no bug eyes. All those things we've experienced on previous planes. That being said, really, really beautiful. Look at the intake. Oh, it's so cool right there. I love that detail. So cool. Um, you don't see a lot of mold release. Mm -mm. Anywhere on this, you just see rivets, which is just gorgeous. Okay. All right, so enough of that. This is what I mean by mold release right here. These are mold release dimples, okay? Mm -hmm. Right here, bunch of them. But it doesn't matter, it's an unseen area, okay? Same thing, that's, yeah. I don't know if that's just where they insert the uh, foam or if that's just something to do to help keep the mold from sticking, possibly. Okay, so I always like to put those together as we get them out. Drop tanks. These drop tanks look good. They're very simple. Okay, real simple. Nothing to them. I don't particularly care for the drop tanks on this plane. So I think we'll probably fly them without. They do produce a little bit of drag. So you gotta kind of keep that in mind. Okay. All right, so then we have the wing joiner, which is made of carbon fiber. It's hollow. It's quite strong. Okay, that's gonna be for that. And by the way, if you did that to a foam part, it'd break in half. So that's why that's there. And oh, spinner. There's a spinner over here. See, right there. So if you pull this up, there's the bottom. Really nice paint job on that. A little bit of dirt. That's disappointing. That's probably overspray. Hmm. See? Beautiful. And then texture here that helps to hold the prop and then texture here, which holds the call it prop adapter. We've got that there. I think that's all the pieces here. We Is should that have everything? a bag of goodies somewhere. Huh. Hardware. Let's keep looking then. Down there. Yep. Right there. Probably here, I yep. bet. Look at this. Whoa. Guys, that would have been so easy to miss. Look. Oh, it's under there. It's under here. Whew. Just gotta grab the nut sack here. Yeah, if you don't have anything to put it together with. Oh, that's not a nut sack. Oh, yeah, it is. There's one. Okay. All right, cool. So if you're looking for your nut sack and bolt sack, just uh, pull this out. It was hiding. <laughs> so without further ado, we will pause it, come right back for the build. Okay, guys. So look at her belly moving. See it? Oh, that's so cute. Baby, that's so cute. Fire. Should we show them the other little kittens too before we finish this build? Oh, we should. Hold on. Okay, we'll pause it. Okay. So this is one of the kittens. They're so cute. He was eating. So I was the meanie that took Jeez. took this little guy. I think it's a guy. We don't know yet. Yeah. They just open their eyes. Mm -hmm. They're like two and a half weeks old. Look how fuzzy and cute they are. They're almost to the size when I got their mother and father, brothers and sisters. <laughs> they're so cute. And there's two more. This guy, this one's, this one's darker. Mm -hmm. There's two that are really dark like this. And then there's one that is like striped like the mama. She has lighter gray stripes. Look at those vicious claws. These guys will murder many, many, many mice. Their eyes are so pretty and blue. Okay, so back to the build. <laughs> so one more thing before we get started on the build. I didn't actually show how this lock works because if you've got, you know, like potentially thousands of dollars worth of stuff in here, you might want to lock this, which is pretty cool. So that's unlocked. The key looks to be kind of a gen generic key. You turn it all the way around and then it clicks and then you take it out and that stops it. Which is pretty cool. I mean, if somebody wants in, they're getting in. It's not like this is some high security thing. Okay. But that is pretty sweet, actually. Mm -hmm. um, I think more, more than anything, it's just a, a mechanism to secure it so it doesn't come unlatched in transit. Um, it's not really going to be a super high security thing. But I wanted to show you that. It does come with two keys, too. So that's really nice. Anyway, back to the build. Tom sent me this thing years ago. Thank you, Tom. It wasn't years ago, it was months ago. And we've enjoyed it many, many, many times. Yeah. So we're gonna build this thing right now. 
And yes, it's not a build. This is an assembly. It's super easy. When you get a bind and fly plane from Horizon, it usually goes together real easy. Um, if you haven't done this before, we're going to walk through it with you right now. We'll start with the easiest stuff. They technically want you to do the tail first, so why don't we just do that first? If you get a Horizon plane, one of the first things you can do, if you're not sure, would be to, of course, look at the manual. They have some of the best graphics and they have some of the best nomenclature. This is if you're gonna do a plug and fly, they want a five minute timer, center gravity is 85 millimeters plus or minus three millimeters back from the leading edge at the ring root. So that, that'd actually be 82 to 88 millimeters. So you have a six millimeter range. This is if you're gonna set up by throw and you would use something like calipers to measure how much the throws are, okay? Pretty simple stuff. So it tells you the model assembly. This is in English, by the way. They also have in other, there's Italian, French, and then German, German. okay? So this is the important part for computerized transmitters. Okay, so this is where we're gonna be down in this area. If you have an NX lineup, you're gonna be down here with the DX. Okay, so I ran with a DX18 for many, many moons. Loved it, it was, it was my go-to transmitter, and it's still far more capable in certain ways than even the NX8, but I use the NX6, which is the bottom of the line card. It's the cheapest one you can get, and it's been working flawless. So it would work perfect for this plane. Um, if, if you're tight on the RC budget and you still wanna get an NX radio, that's one way to go. But for 40 bucks more, you get the NX8. I would highly recommend it. If you can squeeze the extra 40 bucks out of budget, do it it will be money well spent. So the tail goes in like this. I've had people ask that question numerous, numerous times. And uh, to be honest with you, I, I stand by that. That's pretty much the truth. Now you get up to the NX10 and you're gonna need to have some pretty sophisticated models need more than eight channels. On the NX18, or excuse me, on my DX18, I don't know that I ever actually used more than 10 channels on any plane. Did you use 10? Yes, I had one 10 channel receiver from Lemon at one point. Mm, okay. Yep, and I can't even remember, I think I had drop tanks on a plane. And then I had a couple eight channel receivers too. So that being said, so you see what happened there? Some of that paint gets pushed out sometimes, so just be a little bit careful. If you have to, you kind of, sometimes you gotta kind of squish this to get that leading edge to drop down in there. So you see what's happening there? Just kind of rock that back and forth. It doesn't damage the finish out here, but it does push some of the paint out, okay? All right, and then there's a screw point here and here, okay? Sometimes you'll find them on the bottom, but it's up here. You do have to get this clevis at some point. We'll come back to that in a few minutes, okay? So we opened up the sacks of screws and bolts and nuts. So we need two of these. And they say it's B. Our, our bags were not labeled. Yeah, no, they were. They, they were. were labeled. And were those right? were in B. Those little black screws were well, in that's B. that's awesome. They yep. must have watched our video when we did this the last time because it was not in the right. This thing just slips in here. By the way, don't glue it. Don't glue it. Why, camera crew? Because if you transport your plane, it's the first thing that's going to get broken. Yep. And then if it's not glued, it can just push yes. out of the way. Yep. Yep, which is super nice. Now, there's many, many other antenna setups that you would not want to leave unglued. Yes. Okay, so just get that started. This is just a cheap Chinese screwdriver that I got from one of my cheaper models. Actually, that might've been a nice one for like FMS because it feels good. Feels good. Okay, so all the way down, good penetration. You always want to ram it in there and get good penetration. If you don't have good enough penetration, you could lose a wing. Nobody wants that. Nope. These things always line up on Horizon models. <laughs> That's a good addition <laughs> to your comment. So now that we have that in there, they're recommending we put the wing on. Okay. I'm going to put the prop on first because it's easier to get to. Okay. So this thing, works with this thing. There's a screw that fell into that, by the way. That's why it came out of the bag, so I didn't want to mess with it. Sure, that's fine. So it looks like this one's probably gonna be the screw that goes all the way in 
could actually be this one. I can't remember which one it is. That's A. Was it in the A bag? A was the big long ones. Okay, so these are all A's because the ones that hold the wings on are these and they look a lot like the A. Okay, so look, 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 look. They look the same to me, mm -hmm. okay? And they are driven by, okay, they go into the tip of this thing, if I recall. Yeah, they do fit, okay? And the way I'm gonna test this theory is if that fits through, which it kind of does. Nope, it doesn't really seem like, maybe, maybe that isn't it. Are you sure that's it, camera crew? No, I think, I think it's supposed to be the little black one that came in there. I think ah. it's mislabeled in the manual. Okay, see that? So that goes through, and it's gonna go into here. Yeah, that feels pretty good. You're talking about in this bag? Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll try that one then. There's one spare screw for the horizontal stabilizer. Okay, this has, looks like it's exactly the same. So that bag in ours was labeled C that has that little prop adapter. Hmm. It feels like it's going in okay. Kind of hard to tell. All right, I think we'll be fine. Let's go ahead and put it on right now. Okay. So the first thing you want to do to put together your prop assembly is make sure you have the appropriate screwdrivers. In this case, it doesn't come with any sort of a nut driver for this, or not a nut driver so much, but a, this, is a, this is a Phillips. This is a Phillips, okay? But it goes like this. This goes right onto the motor, okay? And you'll notice there's some texture here, okay? And then that makes a nice fit. Then the prop goes on, and then that meshes up there. And how do you tell which direction? If this is going counterclockwise, it'll pull the plane forward, okay? So if you put it like this, that's wrong. It is a little bit harder to tell on some of these blades, but this one's pretty obvious because of the paint, paint job. Then this goes on here. You could do mostly without tools. And then I use a screwdriver that fits into the hole. And then you can use that to torque it, torque it down like this. You see that? And get that sucker nice and tight. And then test it. Make sure you don't have anything binding. Look here. See how there's a gap? The gap looks even on top and bottom. Test a couple spots, you're good to go. So now, this thing has a little lip on it, and that lip rests into this lip here, okay? See how nice that fits? And believe me, it isn't always that way with RC models. So if this is gonna be your third or fourth plane, as a second plane, this plane is a little bit tough, I would say. But since it has safe select, safe select really helps. Safe select, is going to automatically level the plane when you let go of the sticks. Okay, so just torquing this down all the way. That's not it. That didn't pull tight. That's so weird. So we're going to try another. This is the only other. Unless it's that short black one. But that's not going to pull it tight either. That is definitely not the same type of screw either. Huh, yeah. Did it just not go? Let me try again. We'll try the other one. Maybe there's a cross thread or something in there. See, that definitely catches in there nicely. And that's the one that was in the bag with the yeah. prop adapter. I agree. I'm gonna just uh, try this and see if maybe I'm doing something wrong here. Oh, well, we've built three of the, excuse me. I also built Estebans. Estebans oh, you did? do night. So oh. this is the third time I built this plane. And the fourth time I built this plane, if you include the, the first one I did. I don't know, it's going still. Still going. Still going. Maybe I just felt a little pressure and stopped. Oh, huh, it's going. Maybe we had a cross thread on that first screw. I was gonna say that would have been strange. Look, yeah. Nice and tight. Everything's together. Okay, All no right. problem. All right, no harm, no foul in this case. Now, also notice on this plane stand that where the antenna sits, when I flip this around, it's likely to hit the support. So just be mindful of that. So we'll just set it here. Now, you don't need a plane stand to do this. We used to use 
Um, those blankets, those blankets. Yeah, the one that has a hole in it. Mm -hmm. I did that with the uh, blondie. Mm -hmm. Like about three days after I bought the blanket. It's okay. I it forgot. Was, I forgive you. It was awesome. It was awesome. <laughs> They're still holding it. it I is. was just complaining the other night. <laughs> you were. We were sitting down to watch TV and I'm like, why are you going to make me use the holy blanket? And she reminded me because it, I did it. Because you put the hole in it. So now we got to put some Y cables on here. Uh, this one's labeled ailerons. So this is a Y splitter cable. So the ailerons share one channel on the receiver because one operates inversely from the other. Okay, so one of these goes up while one of these goes down, and then the flaps operate in the same direction, okay? But it just depends on what direction they mount the servos as to whether or not the function's gonna go in the same way. So you see this one's kind of over there, and then the head's over here. This one's got the control or the head over here, and then that's the body, okay? This one's got the body that way. This one's got the body this way. See how they're opposite? So in case you ever go to build one yourself, Make sure you think about that in your servo pockets so you don't have to, to do a servo signal reverser or use up two channels for flaps, okay? If you don't understand why that's a factor, then try it once and then you'll, you'll start kind of connecting the dots. Okay, so here's flaps. I have the aileron one. Let's grab the flap one since that's the first one I grabbed. You want to go brown to brown or yellow to yellow, both at the same time, preferably. Okay, this has a retainer clip on it. Oops, see I did that backward, but it didn't go all the way in because it's keyed. You have to push it pretty hard if they're wrong. Okay, see that? Now what happens if you plug that in backward, uh, camera crew? It won't work. Neither of them will function, but it won't like catch on fire right, right. away. Okay, right away. <laughs> because what happens is, this is your voltage in the center. This is your ground from DC voltage. So this is like, um, hey, grab me a screwdriver camera crew, second point. Yeah, perfect. So this is your DC ground, this is your DC positive. So 12, or it's not 12 volts, this is five volts, and then zero for reference. Then this is signal. So it actually looks, compares to this one. So what happens is if you plug this in backward, your 12 volts is still 12 volts. It's just that your reference is messed up. Mm. Okay, so when you use pulse width modulation, then you have a reference to make a sine wave, and then the change in the speed of the sine wave is the pulse width. And as you change the pulse width, then it changes the behavior of the servo. So if you have a pulse width that's very, 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 very tight, then it moves to one position, and if it's very, very wide, then it moves to another position, and then everywhere in between, it changes the position of the servo. So anyway, that's why I go over that thing. I just want you to mostly know that you're, you're not gonna catch your plane on fire if you flip this wire, but you wanna get in the habit of doing it right. Because you, you have to take it apart. And if you get something put together. Oh, look, goodness gracious, aileron. I plugged in the aileron. Look at this. You gotta actually read them, Brian. And if you get something put together and your flaps don't work or your aileron doesn't work, check, check that. Even when you're sitting here going brown to brown, We've plugged them in wrong. We did it on the A10. I've done it on other planes. I can't think of them offhand, but I know the A10 mm -hmm. had a glued wing and I still had to take off one of the, one of the rudders. Um, they had a, a Y cable that went into the tail of the A10, mm -hmm. which is, by the way, the A10 is awesome. So, but before you start ripping other stuff out, check your wiring. Check your Even wiring. Even if you go, no, that's easy to do. Yeah. Yes. Oh, trust me. It happens to everybody who's done it. Okay. Yep. So aileron and aileron are both in my hand. Okay. So I'm gonna grab the one that says aileron for easy figuring. The other thing too is, you know, we're sitting here filming and jabbering on about pulse width modulation. So <laughs> when I start talking about pulse width modulation, Not I get really. pretty distracted. Pretty really exciting stuff. It is. Okay, so here's the landing gear plug. So when they say gear, they mean retracts or landing gear. Same thing here. These are all high quality. Ironically enough, Landing gear always have thinner cables. I don't know why that is. If they're not marked, go to the thinnest one and I guarantee you that's gonna be your gear. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Because the way I understand it is they draw the most load. What? Yeah. But they're also only actuating for a short duty cycle. Right. Because you only run gear 
uh, for a few seconds. And the ailerons and the flaps, same thing, but the ailerons are constantly, especially with AS3X, they're always right. moving, trying to correct uh, the position of the plane. If you don't know what AS3X is, AS3X is a stabilizer that helps, it's called an artificial three axis stabilization. That's what AS3X stands for. And it keeps the plane uh, from being impacted by environment instead of your control stick. Okay, so if the wind pushes this down, the ailerons is gonna, the aileron's gonna go up, that one's gonna go down, and it's gonna counter that impact. So if the wind goes, it's gonna counter and bring you back to that position as close as it can. And then auto leveling or safe is gonna keep the plane level when you let go of the sticks. If you give it a little bit of input, it'll do what you say, and then when you let go, it just snaps back. Okay, so we'll go over that a little bit more here in a minute. You do not have to use safe. Safe is a selectable thing that you can put on the switch. When we use the uh, NX7, excuse me, the NX6, you can do safe select on that. And you do need the seventh channel that is a real channel, okay? And uh, you can go back and watch my last review of this June night if you wanna see how to do that. On this one, we're gonna go through on the NX8, of course. Hey, while we're down here, should we do this elevator control too before we put the wing in? The through. elevator is supposed to be in the outside control horn per the manual. You see this? Elevator goes to the outside control horn. This is on the servo inside the fuse. That's already landed for us, but I got to do this one. So let's show the people here. See this? So the outside hole, what if I did that so you could actually get in there easier? Okay. So then this is just going to slip through. There it goes. Now, I'm not going to snap this yet because I want to make sure that everything positions out when we start up the receiver. Okay. The receiver, or excuse me, the uh, rudder's already hooked up because the rudder's attached in the box on this plane. Some planes you have to install the rudder, so you'll have to actually do that one too. Okay, so we've got all of these cables nice and neat and ready to go. And it uh, might make sense to just pull the canopy off, drop that down, and then you can just kind of feed these through this hole here. You don't need to make any special accommodations, just kind of feed it down. And this is the AR631, which is the replacement for the AR637, or excuse me, 636A and B. Okay, so once you get the wire started, then you can tuck this down in just like this and just keep guiding those wires carefully because you don't want to be tripping over them. Okay. Look how nice this fits, beautiful. Beautiful. And if you're real careful about the way you do it, then you won't nick this paint back here, but I did a little bit because I wasn't paying attention. Okay. So you see what I'm talking about right here, guys? See this right here? I just barely nicked the paint right there. You'll never know any better, mm -hmm. but I just want you guys to see that I did that. So when you're kind of sliding that into position, the choice is to kind of ding up the front or to ding up the back. So I just made a choice. I mean, it was kind of, I didn't really actively make the choice. It just happened. So, all right. So we got these long screws, the silver ones. I know for sure those are the ones for the wings because I've built this plane four times now, which is a little weird. <laughs> okay. okay, so that looks like that's a two millimeter. Two millimeter. And watch this. I bet all four of them line up. What do you think? I bet you're right. Yeah, immediately. Why can't they all do it, Mike Horizon? I don't know. It would so, make my life so much easier. You guys probably already know by now that Horizon... Hey, wait. What? Is there a thing that goes over that? A cover thing? No. What are you talking about? Never mind. It just looks like it. No, there isn't. Okay. Um, if you guys may have noticed that I enjoy Horizon Hobby, and I, I do enjoy Horizon Hobby. They're one of the best brands out there. They back up their products, so when you do have the occasional issue, call them up, talk to them. They're one of the few that will take care of it. And I've worked with a lot of different brands. Okay, I wanna show these people when this gets tight. I want them to see what happens. There's puckering that happens on the foam right here, and that's your first sign. Okay, watch the puckering. See the pucker there? See the pucker there start? So don't go too overboard. You want to get all four kind of tightened up so you see your first sign of puckering. So puckering here and here, okay. And then just get all four of them ready to rock and roll. Uh-oh. <laughs> I moved. 
Oh, good. I was going <laughs> to say, you're trying to give the cat some privacy here? Yeah. Hold on. I have to take care of something. Nope. Sorry, buddy. You have to go outside now. <laughs> we already have enough kittens. Don't eat any more. Jerry's bringing her up beside <laughs> Okay, so there's the pucker starting. Now I'm gonna come back over to this one and just go a little bit more and then just a little bit more and you're gonna not be able to avoid any of that pucker, guys. You don't have to go crazy, but I can tell you from experience, you do want that to be nice and tight. Come on now, you can do it. Awesome, okay, good. So that's tight now. So everything is assembled with the exception of snapping that clevis and getting these wires lined. So let's do that next. Would you mind pulling that over toward you, please? Thanks. Okay, so we got the plane let down and then over here, camera crew. So from the side, we can see that everything's labeled. This is the AR-631. So there's a button. That's a bind button, but there is a bind plug as well. See how there's a bind plug right there. If you want to use it, you can use a bind plug. Okay, I would not recommend it. It's not necessary. And then of course, this is where you're going to plug in your battery. This is called an EC3, which is compatible with an IC3. And an IC3 is like what we find on 4S 2200 30C. We also have this in a 50C and 100C in a Gen 1, we have a bunch of them. So that's gonna go onto here. So just be mindful as you work your wires, you need to make sure you give yourself room to get that thing out, okay? So that's the battery tray, which is super duper nice that you can pull that whole thing out. I like flying this plane on a 2200 4S. Um, you can fly it on bigger. You can also see how this feeds through the bottom. If those things aren't free, it is a pain in the butt to put batteries in. These are the thicker kind that don't break immediately, but they're not the thickest kind. So don't go too crazy on your batteries because it will eventually break. And it's because it's thin here and here. Okay. So not my favorite design uh, in terms of the straps, but I love the fact that you can get the tray out. So it makes it a lot easier. Cause imagine mm -hmm. doing this in here where you've barely got enough room to get your fingers. Yep. So my best advice would be get this adjusted for your battery kind of figure out where the battery goes, which we'll talk about in a little bit. See, I'm having a pull from the bottom side. See, And then I just get that kind of lined up so that it slips through. Then it's just a lot easier. But really, that actually probably, I should pull that to the other side so it comes over here. So I'll do that next. See this? See, I want that to be lined up right there. So that your tab folds over that. Yeah. There's like That's grease on this or something. It's kind of weird and gross. Yeah, I don't understand why there's grease on it. Yeah, it's kind of weird. You didn't like make cookies and like get into this thing, did you? Not today. Look, that's so weird. Is it on the battery? Uh, I don't think so. I think mm -hmm. it's on the tray, which is very strange. It's because this thing needs to be lubricated to slip in. Well, I mean, yeah. So. That's reasonably tight. And then this one is somewhat reasonably tight as well. And then that will resist it slipping out. I feel like it needs a little bit more pressure. The reason I'm doing this now is because it is kind of nice to know exactly how everything's gonna be positioned so that you don't end up tripping over yourself later when you go to get everything in there. Okay. See how that, that's slipping? I don't have it tight enough. Okay. It could be the lube. Could be. Note Seriously, to self. That's what it's for. Do not lubricate battery tray <laughs> again. Bad idea. Save it for something else. Yes. Good idea. So there's that. Okay. So if your plane is doing this, <laughs> it's not this plane. It's already crashed. Okay. Okay. So we're just going to slip this into the rails that are down here. There's two rails. Watch this. Watch this, guys. It's good stuff. Real easy to film this step. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I mean, filming the insertion is usually not recommended. Yeah. Okay, but we are on the wild side for you guys. Okay, so now that I have, I have everything inserted, I'm gonna go ahead and wash my hands. <laughs> what, I don't, yeah. I don't even know. I don't really understand exactly why there was lube on there, but the two plastic parts that went by each other are much happier now. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna plug things in. Everything is labeled that's plugged in, but I don't know where the rest of them are supposed to go. So I'm gonna just refer to the manual. The manual should show, oh look, look at this. It does, see where it says? Oh boy, that's kind of ambiguous, isn't it? I think I got one that's like kind of hard to read, but there's, there's the bind plug. And then it looks like one, two up from that is ailerons. So ailerons like this, go one, two up. And you see how there's yellow here? That'll give you a reference. The yellow is to the left and the brown is to the right or toward the front of the plane. Okay. Then the next thing is gear and gear is all the way, nope, flaps are all the way to the top. Channel six for gear. Okay, so we'll just go ahead and plug that in. Yellow again is gonna go to our right, like this. Boom. Wait. Excuse me, that was supposed to be flaps, wasn't it? Yep. Gear was supposed to be five. Let's just show the people again. Gear was supposed to be five and then flaps was supposed to be six. And if you guys are wondering, if you ever lose your manual or you're like super, super lazy like me, you can actually download the manual and use it on your phone. But uh, somebody's using my phone right now. Yeah, the same person that usually reads you your manual. <laughs> and she's filming me on it. Okay, so you see this? Everything reaches appropriately and I um, don't have scissors. Do we have scissors around here, camera crew? Are they not in your pocket where they usually are? I just have a feeling I'm gonna trip. Make sure you don't trip and fall oh, when you're carrying whoa. your scissors. Oh my goodness, wow, I tripped. What, oh man, oh shoot, oh, dang it. I hate when that happens. Those things tend to get in the way, but I mean, if the lawyers are watching, don't worry. I'll be super careful. <laughs> okay, so anyway, I'm gonna tuck all these wires very carefully. Now you could wait until you've tested it, but I'm just gonna live wild, wild, wild here. And I'm just gonna, just gonna ram it in. Yeah, oh yeah, that's good right there. Ooh. Speaking of ramming, our cat's gonna <laughs> go. Oh. What, we can't show a cat attacking an animal? Oh, the animal got away. <laughs> That's Pouncer, our boy. He is, um, not he good is, at catching birds. He is a, yes, he is. No, he's I've not. I've seen him catch birds before. He's good at catching mice though. Yeah, no. which is why we got them. We, we uh, love our cats because they take care of our property. Okay. They're actually more of like a farm thing than they are a human thing, right? Like a pet thing? Or is that just what I tell myself? The, yeah, I was gonna say it depends on if you ask you or our kids. Yeah, right. Okay, so all these wires are very meticulously and carefully tucked in, okay? <laughs> so it's tucked in here. Now you also wanna be real careful about these two wires getting bound up or tied up in there. And then also this antenna, which they have kind of sloppily placed there. I'm gonna tape that on the side possibly um, I want to see how the canopy meshes up here. See how deep this is here? It's going to go way down there. So I'm thinking I'm going to just, there's only one antenna on this, so I don't know. I kind of like the idea of it being down here because then it's out of the way of the control arms, but I don't want it to stick out the bottom. Actually, I could go under both of those frames. You see that? See what I'm doing, guys? I'm just feeding it down under. You want to stick it between down under. Okay. Oh my goodness. This is the I want in signal. Well, are you going in? Did you see him climbing? Yeah. Our cats are being catsy today. He usually waits better at the door, but he wants to climb. Okay, so 
I'm going to lift this up so I can see if the antenna, yeah, the antenna didn't make it out the vent hole, so we're good. That makes me feel better because it's out of the way of the two servos that are in question. So at this point, our next step is to essentially get our transmitter set up, but we do have to mark the center of gravity. Oh, you know what I totally forgot? What? That is embarrassing. Oh no. Yeah. We haven't done that in a while. Yeah, we haven't done that in a while. I forgot to uh, stick the doohickey in the hole. They've been yelling at their computer screen for like the last don't know. 31 and a half minutes. Don't, don't forget. We're going we're gonna to fix it. There's going to be like 12 comments before people realize that we did it later. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so. You should only have to take one side though, If right? you forget, just pull out the side that doesn't have the control arm on it. Slide this through. I'm sorry guys, I totally forgot. Slide that carbon fiber rod and then slip it back down. There you go. See, it's not that hard to fix unless you drop your screws. You're too busy explaining how to put the little thing in if the paint gets bunched up. You're talking about, yeah, I know. I'm always explaining how to stick well, the thing in the doohickey. At least it didn't take us three hours to put that screw in. That's true. <laughs> and you would think that would never happen. And yet it has. There's a reason. More than once. Yep. Well, speaking of the thing in the doohickey, <laughs> get out of here. <laughs> Leave them alone. No. We don't need any more kittens, Bob Barker. Yeah. I, well, let's take care of that. Yeah. Later. I think we're going to pause for a second. Okay. okay. So we had to interfere with uh, Animal Planet over here for a little bit. <laughs> We just, we just weren't sure we were ready to include that in our videos yet. I know that you guys keep asking to see the cats, but I don't think that's Probably what you Probably not that meant. part. Let's go back. Well, I don't know. There's, I'm sure there's some. No, it's on the very first page. <laughs> you mean there? So 85 millimeters back, plus or minus three. So 85. Plus or minus three means 82 millimeters, right? Mm -hmm. 85 minus, okay. That's so from enough. the leading edge of the wing root. Now, I don't know if it means here or here. I'm gonna go with here, okay? So you have to imagine where that plane would be. Ha oh, plane, get it? <laughs> so there's our first mark right there, okay? And I'm just gonna verify we're still at 82. We are, because these are the world's crappiest calipers. And then I'm gonna go from here back, okay? And then just make my little dent there and mark it. Okay, so I'm just gonna tell you guys right now, this plane is quite forgiving in terms of CG. Okay, so 85 plus three would be 88, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so I'm just gonna go right there. And then I'm just making a little bump it doesn't need to be a giant black dot, guys. It can be um, whatever you want it to be. You know, it could be a small black dot. It could be a small, um, what are some of the items that people have suggested? There's the stickers. Yep, and there's like little glue dot things. We've Somebody done glue dots. Somebody suggested like a push pin mm -hmm. head. I don't know, it's just, I said push pin. Is that what you said? See this? You just found this is the easiest thing. I'm right in the it. middle of the two holes. Yep. And it's perfectly balanced. It's pretty good to me. So I'm happy with that. And you'll notice, what did we do with the battery? It's right in the center of the tray. Okay. Okay. Ready? Let's look. See where that is? The nope. battery tray snaps in. So get it all the way to its home position. Okay. So it was not centered. Okay. Dang it, I got lube on me again. Jeez. Man, I just can't get lubed up like crazy. Okay, so this is where this is gonna go. So that's our mark. Okay, right there. And then I'll mark it over here so you can see when it's in there. And I'm just gonna write 2200 4S. Okay. Now, why would you write that? Because, because when you, when you have, have 200 planes in your basement, you forget. Your camera crew doesn't always remember what battery goes in what plane. <laughs> That's true. We forget. Um, okay, so I must say that with the lube, it does work a lot nicer. <laughs> the problem is I don't like getting lube all over myself. 
All right, so here we go. Canopy on. That thing is gorgeous, guys. Look at this. That is so pretty. I love this plane, no matter how many times I build it. <laughs> so now what we're gonna do is we are gonna set up the radio and the radio is gonna be a little bit more set up than usual. Normally radio setup just entails setting up the transmitter for a new model. And if you weren't already aware on the new NX lineup, you can actually download from your Wi-Fi. You don't even have to have an SD card, but you can use an SD card and you can download the model into this. I do not ever review that. Why, Brian, why? Because I want you to know how to use this. This is one of the most expensive things you're gonna buy in your hobby and you might as well know how to use it. Now that doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with downloading it, but you know, if you're downloading it, that's not really teaching you much, okay? Plus you're not gonna set it up exactly the way I do, which is awesome. <laughs> Just kidding. There's only very small deviation. Ooh, wow, look, stickers all over the place. Okay, that's, you know, it's a small, thin, thin little oh book. Oh my goodness. Yeah, there's, there's not much to read there. I'm not reading that to you. Yeah, camera crew, could you just go ahead and read that to me? <laughs> Everybody get their popcorn, settle in. Whoa. Well, it's in several languages. Okay, well, that, that makes me feel slightly better. And then this is a registration card, so we'll just like leave that. Now, keeping in mind, you do register these things. If you ever buy a used one, which I'm not recommending you necessarily do that, but if you do make sure that the person that owns it relinquishes their privileges to it online through spectrum.com, okay? If they don't, you won't be able to update the firmware. Look at that beauty. Oh, I missed you, the knob, it's so pretty. Oh, there's trims up here too, cool. Awesome, it comes with a lanyard. Oh, nice. I'm super happy because I didn't have a lanyard that came with the NX6. Yes, NX8, awesome. I have to restring the lanyard at some point because I do it different than you. Also, it comes with a standard, <gasps> Whoa, it's got an angular plug on it. It comes with this so you can get in there and make adjustments. Look at this. It even comes with the USB-A to USB micro. That's micro, I think. It's got a 90 degree on it, which is really nice. Okay, so lots of, lots of good things there. If you didn't already know this. Okay, so. There's adjustments under here, and there's adjustments here and here. I'm gonna let you refer to the manual if you decide to do that. Of course, the antenna folds all the way flush, which is super nice for transport if you don't have one of those awesome bomb cases. Sorry, transmitter cases. Trainer plug, headphone jack. I'm not sure what that's for. Oh, so that it can actually speak to you through the headphone jack. And then the USB plug, so let's just uh, show you how that works. You can charge this with the provided cable, or you can just use whatever you want. That's pretty awesome. I like how it keeps it nice and tidy. Plus, if this falls, you don't break the port, mm -hmm. which is really nice. Okay, for the best experience, please set up your account on www.spectrumrc.com and then utilize Wi-Fi functionality on your NX transmitter to register and update to the latest firmware, okay? I agree with that. That is a pretty good idea. Okay, that's a little bit weird. I thought it was gonna cover the whole screen, it mm -hmm. didn't. Okay, so in terms of size and otherwise feel, it feels exactly the same. Looks like there is a battery in here. I ended up with a bigger battery. Okay, it's already plugged in. This is a 2000 milliamp hour 1S, 7.4 um, watt hours. Okay. In my NX6, Oh, and by the way, if you're going to put a, that's a micro SD card, okay? Right, so you can do some. There's foam on the back here to hold the transmitter battery in. If you get the bigger battery, it fits in there just beautifully, okay? All right, so let's get this junk out of the way. All right, in order to set this up, let's go ahead and turn it on. So you press and hold the button. It comes up with Spectrum. Acro, of course, this is in the white color scheme. And that is great if you're not filming. If you mm -hmm. are filming, it creates a saturation issue for us in our experience. Yes. 
on the NX6. Whoops. Where did we put the NX6? Oh, it's, it's inside in this case. wonderful case. Let's open in the there. case. By the way, the lid opens and it does not tip over. That's very handy. Yeah. So the NX6. Let's turn this thing on and just start talking about some of the differences. Okay, it looks like this thing's a little, little teeny bit taller. See? It's spatially a little bit taller. Only barely, though. Just slightly. Yeah. I, just, I didn't realize it was going to be bigger. I thought it was going to be the same exact size. Is this bigger, though? It is. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, it's like a little teeny bit taller. Well, maybe it's the exact same case. I don't know. Let's put them back to back. Huh. Optical illusion. Okay, so a couple things you notice immediately. There's a right knob on it with a center tone. There's no right knob here. There's trim, trim here, and trim here, okay? That's LT, and then this is trim for the throttle, and then right trim, and trim for the elevator. Trim, no trim, no trim. Extra switch here, so you gotta switch E here. That's always nice, okay? We're at 3.7 volts, which is a little bit low. So let's click, scroll down, System setup, it's gonna disable the RF, which is lit here. Cool. If you wanna change your display, serial port setup, cool. Trainer, center tone, silence, good. This is where you do your Wi-Fi. Pallet utilities. Pallet utilities is very important. Okay, so the new models is gonna be Spectrum. Actually, yeah, it's gonna be all of them. You can change them globally, global customized. Legacy, orange. What is that? What are Spectrum dark. You have to orange. change this model, I think, to see the colors change. Oh, true. Go yep. down. And then we'll change the new model. There, so we, go. there we go. I don't think that's it. No. That's so cool. Man, that just like screws up the it's saturation. Crazy. Okay, Spectrum High Viz. Um, nope, that's not it. I think it's that. No? No, it's the orange background. Spectrum. There we go. Oh, orange. Okay, orange. cool. So orange, aren't you glad it's orange? Okay, and pretty that cool. that obviously wouldn't be like probably what you would pick, but for what we do for filming, it helps a lot. pretty necessary yep. for me. It's super, super handy. And then for Wi-Fi, you go into Wi-Fi. Now, obviously because of network security things, I can't show the whole step, so we're gonna pause for just a second and make sure that we don't give away security codes. Okay. Okay, so it says connect to network and then save networks. So in this case, I'm gonna go to connect to networks and I'm gonna cover the screen for the camera for just a second. Select network. Thumb twiddling, loading, and then it comes up with my network, so we'll pause and come right back. So I clicked on my Wi-Fi, and it, it brought up three Wi-Fis, one for our Viasat, and then two for our um, different devices that we have for our Wi-Fi within the rest of the house. And then once you click, it allows you to type in a password. So I just wanna to talk to you about this because it's very confusing. It says password, and then down here at the bottom is where you start cursoring, okay? So just be aware it's weird, you don't have to like scroll over here to start typing or anything. That's where you start typing, okay? So then I'm gonna go over here and suppose it started with a number, then you would go over to your number and you would click or a letter or whatever spe special character, but be careful about undisplayable characters. <laughs> you may have to change your SSID if it is undisplayable. So just a quick word of wisdom for those of you that have weird characters, mm. and I don't know who would do that, but I'm sure there's somebody out there. All right, so we'll pause while we type in the password and then come back as quick as we can without giving away security stuff. Okay. Okay, so we have covered up our credentials and then you have to collect auto connect if you want it active, I do. Okay, then I'm gonna click connect and we're just going to do that right now. And I'll just, yeah. So it's obtaining an IP address and it says connected. Congratulations, continue. Okay, cool. So at this point you can see there's a little light, which is kind of cool. I don't remember really seeing that, but I guess we do. So this one is maybe not auto connected, but I don't know. Yeah, I don't really I don't care. Remember. So I'm gonna log in, register. I'm gonna deregister. That's what you need people to do if you buy a used one.
I just had somebody bring it up on a comment today, so I wanted to mention that, check for updates, erase credentials. So I am going to register real quick and we'll just kind of turn it for a second. And I'm sorry, there's just a lot of credentials that you don't want to get out there on the World Wide Web. So invalid login right now is what it's saying. Oh, good. So I think what I have to do is I have to type in my login first. Now the username is your Spectrum RC username, not your horizonhobby.com username. So keep that in mind, folks. So you're gonna have a login here where you type in your username and then your password. And then once you click login, it's gonna log in, it'll check for software updates, and then we'll bring it back as soon as we get in front of that. Yeah. Okay, so um, I typed in my credentials, so we're gonna click register and just quickly pull this away, twiddling thumbs. And it says it's under Wi-Fi settings, of course we're connected. And then it's uh, done with that evidently because it didn't give us an error. And then I'm gonna check for updates. I'm just gonna just double check, twiddling thumbs, loading, and it's got this little loading indicator. Okay, so there's your updates. So I guess I'm gonna click the latest and greatest and it's gonna hopefully load the latest and greatest firmware, which is really nice. So now while that's going, check this out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna scroll into this one. I'm gonna go to system setup, disconnect. I'm gonna go down to Wi-Fi. Okay, and we're just gonna connect to network. Okay, you ready to, we're just gonna connect to this one. This one's downloading. You can see what it's doing right there. It's giving you the speed and everything. Don't forget we're on satellite internet, which is horrible. Mm -hmm. So I am now connected on this one too. Woo, fancy, cool. Now I'm going to check for updates on this. Twiddling thumbs, it's connected, really nice. Now I don't have the auto connect on on this one. Um, okay, so it gave me an error, invalid access token, probably because I'm doing this one right now, I wonder. Mm. It says SPMRC error 2020. And it won't even let me log in again, guys. So you have to erase your credentials before you can log in again. You see mm -hmm. that? So if you wanna log into a different user, you have to erase your credentials and then go back to login. See, it's not even highlightable, mm -hmm. okay? I'm gonna check for updates again after this one's done. So now you'll notice the screen darkened. You can still wake it up just like before and you can back out of this at any time. But look at that blazing fast speed. That's amazing. That's amazing. You could stream like zero movies on Netflix at the same time. Mm -hmm. So anyway, the good news <laughs> is, the good news is that our internet is super expensive too. Yes. It's just a shade over $180 a month. Are you, that's gonna change. It will, hopefully, very soon. We're gonna get Starlink. Yes! I can't wait. While we you, wait for this. You guys are way more excited about that than you should be. We are extremely excited about Starlink. So spending a hundred bucks a month is a lot less than spending 180 a month. Mm -hmm. And it's gonna be a lot faster and it's gonna be a lot more hopefully reliable because instead of going about 55,000 miles round trip at 700 milliseconds of latency, we'll be getting our internet at hopefully uh, 20 to 40 milliseconds of latency and we'll be getting faster download speeds and faster upload speeds. Although Viset has provided pretty good consistent upload speeds of three megabits per second. Yay. Yeah. And before people ask, we don't really have other options. Yeah, we don't. So it's not like we're choosing. We did get a quote for $63,000 for a fiber line to be dropped to our house. Yes. Yeah, so we were like, yeah, We thought about no. that for a... Yeah, we thought for like 10 seconds about saying 10. anything other than, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't, we, were th we weren't thinking about saying yes, we were thinking about what we could say in tandem with no <laughs> that we can't display on this channel. I'm peeling off these little plasticky things. Now we're up to 14 kilobytes per second. It's super fast. Really, really, really good fast. I'm sure our kids aren't using the internet for anything right now. They might not be. Yeah, I doubt it. I would say they are. So at this point, this is gonna take a little bit to download. It says three minutes and eight seconds, three minutes and 10 seconds. It's just showing the elapsed time. So I don't know if they just keep that for statistical analysis, but so far so good. I'm gonna see if this checks for credentials again. It's probably just, nah, it gave me the same error. That either means that I'm all the way up to date. I'm gonna actually go to, I'm gonna to go to my set, system setup for just a second. I'm gonna see, hold on. 
Yeah, it looks like we're running 3.02 on this. So three point, that was a higher than 3.02. That's 3.04.01. Yeah. If you guys wanna know why it costs so much for these things, here's an expensive page. If you go to next, it says the regulatory information for Canada also and for the UK. Mm -hmm. So, or the European Union and Australia. Australia just has this oh. one little icon. Good Everybody job. else has pages. There's two pages for Canada. The EU is only that one little thing too. Well, Isn't it? they have a garbage can, you literally. You can't throw it away. You must never throw it away. See Canada? Oh, oh it's because it's in French. French and English. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> okay, so back to the front screen. Sorry, all you French speakers. I do actually have a few of you, and we're very glad you're here with us. Some of you type in English. And we'll Google Translate yes. your comments. So I really, really, really hope that the Google Translate doesn't make me say mean things about your mother. Because <laughs> <laughs> I know it usually. All right, so we'll come back. This thing's going to take forever to download. OK, so I decided we're going to wait on the update for now. And I just wanted to show you this. Um, if you get one of these bigger batteries, and I always stow a bind plug in the back. It's nice to have the bigger battery, which we can link to this. I know right now they're probably not real super easy to come by. And so for that reason, I'm going to actually steal this one out of my NX6. Okay, I'll just show you how to do it. It's got a Hextronix 1S connection. Okay. So any battery that plugs into there that has the correct 3.7 volt transmitter pack will be fine. So I'm going to pull this out and I'll actually use that in the existing NX6. You will burn through batteries way faster on this pack because this is only 2000 milliamp hour and this is 6000 I believe. Yeah, 6000 milliamp hours. So when you go to plug this in, then it's kind of tricky with that foam in there. So you have to kind of line it up. And once you get it lined up, you can press down with a longer tool, or if you're lucky, you can get it with your finger. And then I like to twist very carefully to get that so that it relaxes into a nice coil. And then the bind plug, I need to go steal one from my downstairs shop where I have millions of bind plugs. But I like to stick that in there. And then that slides in. And then you can see this will come up just like usual. Comes up 3.9 volts. And then on this one, we're gonna switch into the bigger battery. And I wanna show you one other detail. We have a screen dimming setting that we usually don't use. Well, welcome to the party, Callie. This is what, this is what all cats do that are pregnant. And fresh, she made it. She has been doing very good with jumping. See, I just gave that a couple of twists so that the cable would manage itself nicely. Because you want to be nice to your cables and your cables will be nice to you. Okay, then we'll turn this back on. Throttle sticks down. This is how Callie normally is. <laughs> okay. She's the nosy one. Sorry, Callie. Okay, so you come into your regular setup. Click. Scroll down to system setup. It's going to disconnect to RF, and then we're going to scroll back down to system settings. I want to set that to one minute. That's as long as you can go. Brightness 100%, mode two, lithium ion battery. I'm going to alarm at 3.5. Um, let's see what we were alarming at on this one. System setup, disconnect. System settings. Yeah, we were at 3.5. Inactivity alarm was set to 60. So the brightness drops down at 60 seconds now instead of 30. And then I want to set that to 60 seconds. The inactivity alarm kind of concerns me because this will vibrate and sometimes it'll go off the edge of a table. Channel monitors, eight channel. You can change it to less, okay? I don't know why you would do that. 
And then you can calibrate your sticks and your knob here. Hun, if you'll grab the knob, I'll do the sticks. <laughs> okay, so that's all the way around. And then all the way around. I always want to calibrate this at least once when you first get it. And then you can look at that little line, get that line lined up with the center. And then the knob all the way to the one side, all the way to the other side. And then it says okay, because you need to get this in the center. So there's your center right there. And then click save. Okay, so now I also want to set up my, I don't know if it's under audio events, but the vibrator. Under audio events? Hmm. Well, sometimes it gets I don't know where I want to put it. So the monitor, you'll notice has auxiliary two or auxiliary three rather. And then on this, this only has auxiliary two, okay? Auxiliary two, so let's just count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It says six channel right there, it's seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, it's not like there's nine, there's not a ninth one hitting. This one's actually eight channels, okay? So if you go down to audio events, you can do telemetry, switch changes, generic reports, center tone, binding, telemetry warnings. Start trainer. This is the one thing I really wanted to figure out too. If you scroll all the way down to start trainer, I'm gonna make this one the student. I'm gonna make this one the instructor. I don't know how this works. We've never done it before. Oh, also, if you lose your volume, if it goes to nothing, then you can click the back button. It'll highlight that. You can turn it up and be annoyed. Mm. I usually like to run it about 50, but it still annoys me then. Okay. Okay, so if I go to, I think we have to actually have the same model pulled up. And then what you can do is you can have um, two planes that are controlled by, or one plane that's controlled by the same transmitter. So you can mm. do some training activities. But I believe that'll work wirelessly. I'm gonna do a little bit more research on that. See how it's inhibited right now? I'm gonna set that to student, go back. Whoops. See how it's inhibited? I want that to be instructor. So I don't know if, I think maybe you have to be wired in. I'm not sure. We'll do but some you research. you could be on the same model. That's, that's possible, because I'm on an Acro and then I'm on the Pilatus mm -hmm. PC. So, but theoretically, like, someone else could be flying and then you could take over if there was an issue, right? Yes. Sorry, I get distracted by my knob. I could tell. It was, it was exciting. It was exciting while it lasted. So the sticks feel exactly the same. You can tighten the tension for how much feedback you have there. Obviously this is mode two, so this isn't gonna be spring loaded. You can change that, I believe, as well. There's screw holes here. I believe those will get you in to make adjustments. And then these two will make adjustments for tightness of the retention on this. Okay. So other than that, I'm gonna go back into the wireless and see if we can get it to find. Ooh, I forgot one. Oh, so much prettier that way. So we're gonna see if we can get that in there and get it working again, now that we showed you the battery stuff. Mm -hmm. So under system setup, I found the warnings, okay? So click, scroll down to system setup, disconnect your RF, the light goes off, then scroll down to warnings. That's where you set your vibration and your throttle warning. Voice and vibrate. Okay. So here's different choices. And then the auto config is what you're gonna have to do when you start a, a plane. So you can also have this on a pre-flight, you can force it to ask you questions before you actually start flying, okay? This is where you do your frame rate and you can change the frame rate per channel too, which is really cool. So if you have a digital servo on one of your channels, you can do that. 
then you can do bind live or you can do bind like we've always done it in the past. I don't know what the serial port is, but I believe it's a serial output. <laughs> that was fitting for the sound utility. Okay. So we'll come right back in a second. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we started the download again and it's going way faster this time. We had slowed down to almost two kilobytes per second, which is ridiculously slow. And I don't know why that is, um, but it could be just our internet here. So we really didn't want to waste your time, but at the same time, we do want to show you that the download um, is, is going a lot quicker. If you have better Wi-Fi and or better internet, the connection to the internet should be what's slowing us down here. But um, once this downloads, it'll automatically execute the 3.4.01 PB. And if you look at, there's the automatic. It was one minute since I had touched any of the buttons. So it's staying, it's at 42%. We were only at like 20% before mm. when I canceled oh, out okay. of it. So if you do have a problem downloading, just jump into it again and it should work. Um, the other thing is you'll remember, what else did I do? I tried to do the credentials on this too. Mm -hmm. So it might've been that I interfered with the download sequence. Mm. So as soon as this download happens, then I'll jump in and do it on the old NX6. And my hope is that if I have firmware, the latest and the greatest here and the latest and the greatest here, then I can set up to do the trainer mode. My understanding is that you can do trainer mode um, wirelessly, but I'm not sure exactly how to set up. I've never set it up and it might be pretty cool to set that up and show you how it works. Um, in terms of this transmitter compared to other transmitters, here's what I can tell you so far, and we're at 74%, which is exciting. I have been very pleasantly surprised with the NX6. We've had one or two technical glitches, well, that actually didn't really result in any problem at all. And then we had one that did result in a bit of a problem, and it had to do with auxiliary uh, to channel seven as it pertains to naming it or assigning it to the flap channel. If you do it wrong, there is no way to select it back to flaps. My hope is that's been corrected. There was also some noises that happened after you create a new model and you exit the menu. It's just beep, 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 and then it, it works. And I had it one time, I had it jam. I was just in menu, it was no big deal. It wasn't like I was flying a plane and it needed reset. I was in a menu. So full disclosure. Okay, so it's done downloading. It says the file name. Now I'm gonna click install. So it shuts down the regular mode. Of course, the RF has been off. You can tell because that light's off, but it's still on. And then it's just gonna go back and forth on the status bar in Windows form, which is- Repeatedly. Yeah. <laughs> it's like here, status bar, status bar. Just off, then back on, then status bar, then off, then back on. That way, you're, whoa, it's uninstalling it. Oh, it's getting, we're losing traction. <laughs> so yeah, oh, but it's orange now. It's orange now. Oh, now it's really mm. going. So I think what that is, is uninstalling the old application, reinstalling the new application. Oh, sure. whoa, it's done. It's done after, oh, oh got to no, uninstall something new. Just, it's got to keep you on your toes. So anyway, um, if you're a developer for Spectrum, I apologize. I don't mean to make fun of you and compare you to Windows or Microsoft because that was mean and I repent. <laughs> we, we'll go back to singing your praises shortly as soon as this thing stops changing colors, confusingly. You know, I remember back in the days with Windows 3.0 or DOS when there was a status bar and it would go from zero to 100%. It was, it was really nice. Like you could make a decision like, hey, do I have enough time to go get a cup of coffee? Or can I go to the bathroom? Yeah, but now it's kind of like, yeah, well, it makes you want to pee. <laughs> and then, oh my goodness, it's like a heart attack. So I don't know what's happening in this, but the status bar is seriously trying to confuse me. I think what this is, is copying over models and things like this, images, yeah, so, so uh-oh, it's got to uninstall something. Yeah, we had a bad write, so we're going to undo that one. Then we're going to redo that one. I'm not sure exactly what's going on. But the idea is 
There's lots of pretty colors. There's pretty good resolution on the screen. You can see it from angles. I can see it from this angle right now. I can read mm -hmm. every letter. The colors are askew when you're at an angle like this. I don't know if you guys are gonna be able, can we show them on the camera? See how you can see the image, but it's askew? So mm -hmm. some people have asked, now up from this angle, it doesn't lose its color tone because the way that the um, display mixes colors. This is nothing like a liquid crystal display. It will not slow down in the cold, similar to the DX18 and the DX lineup. It was a liquid crystal display with a backlight and it did slow down pretty drastically. Sorry, the lady was talking to me. So we've noticed no experience, we've, we've seen no delays, and that is, oh look, it's rebooted, 4.0 volts. Okay, so it does not, one, one recommendation, uh, now that you guys are listing uh, software developers for Spectrum, if you could show the firmware up here, like is there a reason you don't? It'd be really nice, like right there, or somewhere, somewhere. I know that there's already things in this bar that come up, like for instance, when you mute, when you mute the volume, it goes to a mute, okay? Doesn't seem like it's any louder. I really wanna, okay, so let's test the timer. Let's see what the vibration strength is. I thought that was in system setup though. Disconnect. Tell me if you think you see it there, camera crew. Center tone, sound utilities, palette, system setup. Okay, so system setup, 60 seconds, mode two, lithium ion. There's gotta be something in here. There, vibrator. Vibrator. Okay, so let's go into the vibrator on this one. Was that system set up? Yeah. Sy system settings, under system setup. Page yeah. two. It's not annoying at all. Here, you feel it. I think it's the same. I can't tell if there's any difference. No. Really? Hold on. <laughs> I can't tell. I think they're the same. This is just heavier because so? it's got the bigger well, battery. Well, maybe that's... Okay, so the uh. answer is I want it to be as obnoxious as it can be, mm -hmm. but I don't want it to go... I don't, I don't think it will, unless it I will blow up. I just about had the DX18 do but that. But the DX18 is stronger. It, it was stronger. So again, in true form, I knew there was a reason I was going to find the vibrator function. <laughs> so the vibrator function is strong enough to be noticed, but it's a little bit less intense than the DX18. So whatever. Okay. So compared to the discontinued transmitter, it's great. <laughs> so. At this point, I'm feeling like everything is working really good. We would be at the point where we could try to bind to this plane, but I'm kind of thinking about something else. I'm thinking I want to try to get all the models from here to here, and then that way we can show the people how to do that. So we're going to do that next and come right back. Okay, so I was continually being annoyed by the fact that this would go dark while this one would stay on. And I'm like, why is it not staying on? Well, this one said on, and this one said 60 seconds scroll all the way to the lowest setting and then go to on. Mm. Okay, then your display will not shut the backlight to a dimmer setting, okay? I know it's just one of those annoying things that you forget about and you wanna not well, have to search for And it. if you're not filming your screen, you might not care that it goes to the dimmer setting. I hate when the dimmer shuts off. Yeah. I don't care how low my battery life is. I need to be able to see the <laughs> screen because when you're out in the sun, you mm -hmm. wanna be able to see the screen. Yeah, that's so, true. Which by the way, also the screens have been phenomenal. We have flown in very bright, we've flown in very dark. And, well, not as much very dark, but I mean, obviously you can see it in the dark. But in the bright sun, it's a lot better than the yep. old. It's very good, yeah. yeah. Well, actually, I didn't have a big problem with the other ones, except for when there'd be a massive glare. It was harder for me to see them. Oh. In the bright sun. Right, that's yeah, true. these are a lot easier. Okay, so we'll come right back with the pulling memory across. Mm -hmm. Go. Okay, so we've got a little USB uh, not a USB, but a micro SD card in here. And it's from an old cell phone. We had to search for it because I didn't have one sitting around. So if you go down to system setup, disable the RF or disconnect the RF, and then go to your model utilities. 
and then I want to export, uh, how do I do this? Oh, actually I want to back it up so it's under system setup. And then I want to scroll all the way down to transfer SD card. Okay, so there's an external SD card and an internal SD card on these things, okay? So I'm gonna select option. I wanna export all models. This may overwrite files, I'm sure it will. So it's transferring. Now we get to see if my 15 year old card has enough space. <laughs> Cause it's only four gigabytes, which is still a ton of memory. Um, but I think I had well, tons of stuff. It was on some old cell Hopefully there was nothing important on it. Well, I mean, it's just our baby pictures. No, oh. big, no big deal. Yeah. No, I'm not overriding the data. I'm just making a directory on the root directory of the drive. Sure. Yes. We're going to see if this works because this should get all the trims and everything over to the new model or over to the new transmitter. And then maybe I'll just keep that. Oh, except then we won't be able to film on that other camera. We should do so much filming on that. Yeah. On the Galaxy S3. S3. Hey, mm -hmm. listen, S3 was better than the S5 because the autofocus on the S5 was horrible. And this it is was. an S9. And we used an S7 for a while and it was great. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now that that's done, we can walk out of the menu structure. Um, just to be on the safe side, I'm gonna go ahead and shut off the transmitter. Okay, so once it's off, and you'll notice that's at 3.02. I did try to update the firmware and it kept stalling on me. I don't know why, so I'm not really that worried. We're at 3.04 on this one. Okay, so you remember how I was saying the developer should add it to the home screen? Mm -hmm. It is upon shutdown. Okay, so I'm gonna mm. pop this out and I'll show you which direction to lay this, okay? The pins go up, okay? Oh. And there is, there is a drawing that shows the pins like this and it is a little bit tricky to find the hole. Sometimes you have to, uh, you know, do some convincing before you can stick it in. Life lessons. <laughs> okay, so now we're gonna click, scroll all the way to the bottom, system setup, one up from the bottom, disconnect the RF. Scroll all the way to the bottom, transfer SD card. Then I'm gonna go down here, model import export under select option. I'm going to import all models. Import, transferring. Hmm. So it's thinking really hard, which is always a bad sign. Mm -hmm. But that's okay. There's, it's gotten very, very, very small, very short. Very short, but that's okay. It's better than nothing, right? Well. There you go. So it's much slower on the read side of things than the write, but that, again, that could be the equipment that we slot, uh, that we uh, slid in the hole. <laughs> it's kind of old and. Old and old decrepit. And dusty. Yeah. Well, but no, I think it's gonna work just fine. My whole plan was to have, and I'm always very gentle, when I lay my transmitters down and I'm doing exports or imports to the external hard drive, even though that's probably a super overkill, I don't want to screw it up when it's doing the import or the export because I don't know if there's a good way to clear it without totally resetting the memory. So that being said, the NX6 has been awesome. They do all the same tricks. This has an extra switch, two extra trims, an extra knob, and then beyond that, I believe there may be some additional mixing and there may be some additional model settings that we haven't found yet. But other than that, it's very similar. And if that is, if this was exactly the same with one extra channel, I would be satisfied with that. Is it enough to justify the extra $40, which is just a little bit over 10% of the cost at the current moment? Because I think these are going for about 310 and this one's going for 350. I would definitely say if you're spending this kind of money, just get the eight. If you really can't afford the extra 40 bucks, then, well, anyway, I could elaborate, but I'm not going to. Um, the NX6 is great and it's gonna do 99% of what you need to do. Except there's always tomorrow and there's always a new plane and there's always things that need reverse thrust that are big and red and awesome. And you may wanna be able to flip light conditions. I'm just saying. I don't want to use any names that end in X, but that's okay. I'm just saying the, the NX8 will do all that stuff that you wouldn't necessarily be able to fully do on the NX6. 
it's still transferring. We're not quite there. Now, this is not one of those schizophrenic bars. It's like full, empty, full, empty, empty, yeah, full, full, it's empty. Just going. It's just a status bar. Thank you, developers. Okay, you want to come back over here? The moment of truth is coming in 14.3 minutes. Ooh, 17 models. Hey, well, that's a good wow, time. That was, that was a lot of information there. Okay, I'm going to walk out of that. I'm going to go down to system setup. Yes, model select. Well, it's a little interesting that there's an acro still. But if you'll look down here. That's awesome. That was our latest model. Okay, I wanna I wanna just pull up that model on both transmitters. Okay, so we're in the Pilatus. You'll notice there's some trim. So let's go ahead and scroll down to system setup. Yes, model select. Let's go to the Pilatus. Oh yeah, buddy. Trim and trim. Okay, so do you, could you see that? Mm -hmm. Can you show them an extreme close up so they can guarantee to see the trim settings? Oh, hold so. So, what many of you at home are thinking is like, Brian, is it really that hard? Is it that hard to set up a new model? You make us do it every time. <laughs> no, no, it's not that hard. I know these things, okay? It's the <laughs> trims that are gonna get you. Cause you're gonna take off and you're gonna be like, whoa, whoa. it's gonna go just like that. Cause you're gonna think it's trimmed cause this thing feels, looks the same, does everything the same way, but your trims aren't gonna be in there, okay? So now let's talk about that extra model that was in here. Okay, system setup, disconnect, model select. Yeah, that's a little weird. One and then one, well, which one's one? This one whoa. or that one? Is so it just re number one. one. This one? No, I'm just gonna go like this. I'm gonna go to model utility. Delete. Oh. Delete. Okay. Back. Model select. Oh yeah. Now the numbering system will stay the same. If I click add new model, it might be two. Until we've powered off the power back on and the thing remembers where we are. Mm. Oh look, add new bind and fly model. Was that on there? Or I wonder if that's in the update. System setup, yes. Model select. Hmm. Huh. I thought that looked different. Yeah, so anyway, uh, coming back full circle, you can add a new bind and fly model. I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna add a new model. And we are gonna build a new model. But I just want you to see, look at the top. P51 Mustang. Watch this, I'm gonna click. And I'm going to go to model name and I'm going to immediately rename this to what are we going to call this? 636. Do we have enough characters? So I'm going to call this yeah. the 636 or 630. Was it 637? No, 636. Is it 630? Is it 636? I think it's 636. I don't know, but are you going to remember what that means? Yes, I will. Okay. Okay. So now when we create a new. That's the 636, meaning this one has the 631, the AR 631. Right. So we're gonna have some semblance of reason there and you need to be remembering that if you get the same models um, that are both. Cause you know, like if I'm flying this and my son's flying that or vice versa, you wanna know what's what. Mm -hmm. So maybe what we'll do is we'll paint the spinner silver on one of them or something simple. So there's a small deviation between one and the other. Does the June knife that you have have the N on the tail? The one downstairs? That looks different to me. You know, I don't remember. That's a good point. Um, and it looks like that picture is the same. It says decked out scale fighter that's easy to fly. I don't remember seeing that I before. I don't either. But it's always hard to tell because they do change the branding and marketing stuff a mm -hmm. little bit from time to time. Well, and that's a good reason to add the size of your model when you're putting it in because if you end up with four p51s well but this p51 well we have more than four p51s by the way <laughs> i know um we have i've done four of these but i only possess two of them now and then we have another mini p51 and another smaller p51 as well and then i have another p51 that my grandpa built yeah and then i have the 
1.5 meter P51. Yeah. So I only have six right now that I can think of. That you can think of. Yeah. So anyway, it is important to add that size in there. And you also notice that some of the competitive products do 59. All right. Don't have enough space to don't do that. Don't have enough space to yeah. do that. Because you barely have enough to put Mustang. I don't even right. think you put Mustang. I think it's just P51. You can put must. Like, must cologne. That's musk. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for pointing that out. 90% <laughs> of the viewers wouldn't have known if you wouldn't have said. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to shut this off so I don't get confused. Oh, okay. Now, the other thing, too, that I'm quite concerned about is... Does that mean I have to rebind every single model? And yes, I did that on my DX18 and it was really fun. On a few of my models, I had trapped the receiver inside of inaccessible holes. You had to rebind them all, really? On the DX18 I did, but you wanna know why? Because the DX8 and the DX18 were not compatible file systems. Oh. So I had to literally painstakingly go through every single model and transmit them over. That was a lot easier. And I did leave the memory stick in there, just so you know. I must have been sick that day. You picked a good day to be sick. <laughs> Hold on. I'm, this is where, since we wouldn't let her lay on the counter, this is, now she's here at my feet. Yeah. She's, she's got to be having those kittens here pretty quick. She is. <laughs> so there's two ways we could accomplish making this model. We could either copy the model or we could create it from scratch. I know that this is a tediously long video. I don't mean to make it tediously long, but it kind of is. And so for those of you who want long videos, you're welcome. For everybody else, I'm sorry. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we are going to go ahead and create this model from scratch. Again, this is the radio setup part for the P51. And you're thinking, good lordy lord, we've covered t-shirts from Into the AM. We've covered the box. We've covered the plugs for the box. We've covered the NX6 and NX8. We've covered the firmware updates lots of different setting changes. And now we're gonna go ahead and get into the radio setup. And we showed him the cats. And the cats, and the belly that moves, which is pretty exciting stuff. So, getting back to radio setup. Um, okay, so the, and we'll, we'll do the safe select binding procedure. There is a bind plug available for the Air 631, okay? And you wanna to go to this page. This is where you're gonna typically start. Okay, so just pause the video if you'd like to take down any notes or take a screenshot and then do the same thing here. Pause the video and you can look at the binding procedure. We're going to be doing this one here with switching safe select on. Okay. And then you want to pause the video on this screen if you want the procedures. This says five times. That's very confusing. What they mean is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The same is true for a three position switch. If you have a two position switch, that's fine. You can also use this thing, this doohickey if you want. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's confusing when you say five, people think that you mean one, two, three, four, five. How come it doesn't work? Five, I've answered that question hundreds of times. Five complete five times. You have to go one, cycles. two, yes. three. But the devil's in the details, guys. Yep. So if you're new to this and you got confused, don't feel bad. You're not the only one. We had problems with it. A lot of us had problems with it. You can go back and watch the original. It was the Spitfire 1.2 meter, and we were confused. And I also got a dead on arrival servo on that one, too. You that. And we fixed it that day, live and in person. We did surgery on it. We didn't even take it out of the plane. Okay, so here we go. I am going to go down to system setup. Shut off the RF, model select. You can do this in a couple of different ways. I'm going to do it from here, add new model. You can also do it from the model utility, okay? We want to create an acro as opposed to a sail plane template quad, that's so cool, helicopter. Okay, so acro, create. Model type, if you change that, it will clear your model. Okay, model name, see how it says one? We're gonna leave that one. Did you notice a, that's normal. Mm. Oh, look where it is, 
Number 17, position number 17. Okay, so we're going to select that model again. Model name. This is one cool thing that they added. Here, can you come over to the other side there? Um, that way you can keep the glare off. So this can be changed. Before you couldn't do that that I know of. So now I can go to 18 and then colon. And then we'll scroll in the rest. So you'll notice that I'm clicking, I'm moving the cursor, I'm highlighting, and then I scroll. Okay. So I want a blank there. So you can also press, oh, dang. you can also press that and it will delete it. Okay. So the rest is history. So we'll type in the rest of this and come right back. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this one, I couldn't put the D in there because the P51D wouldn't have fit the same number of characters because of this as being 18 instead of number one. So now we're on model 630. It's the 631 receiver, okay? So they talk about a couple pages back. This is a good place to start. Remember, we also need to clip the clevis that's on that elevator too at some point here. So all, uh, start all transmitter programming with a blank acro or just reset it, okay? So they were talking about a five minute flight timer. Was that here? Oh, I don't remember seeing that yet. Um, It'd be the page before where the, yeah. Yeah, five minutes. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do is we're gonna set a flight timer. Now, um, I don't know if this has an AVN receiver or not. If it does, then we would have an IC3 connector. So this has an EC3. So I'm guessing mm -hmm. we won't have telemetry for the pack, but we'll have telemetry for other data, which is really nice, but it'd be really cool. Like really my most important thing is the voltage on the pack. So at any rate, we'll do a five minute timer. The throttle stick is gonna activate when it's over 25% and the one time will be active. Then you're gonna go to next. Then at every one minute, we're not going to do anything. At one minute, we're going to not have anything. At 30 seconds, we're going to have nothing. At 20 seconds, and then we're going to voice and vibrate or just voice. And then we'll do tone and vibrate. And then we'll tone every minute. Okay. Okay. You don't want a warning at one minute? We'll do voice on this one. I don't think we normally do that. Though. Okay, I can't remember. Then next, we're gonna leave those. And we'll walk out and we'll show you how that works. 27%, it starts counting down and it stays counting down until such a time as you press the back button or the clear button. Okay, so the clear button here. It's got a little X on it. This is the FN button, the function button. This is the back button. This is the cancel or clear. Yeah, it's harder to see. I mean, it's easy to see in person, but it's harder yeah, to see on the camera. Yeah, harder to see on the camera. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, so without further ado, now we can go back to the actual, some of the settings. So the other thing I want to do is throttle cut. I want that switch to be according to this switch, switch H. So when, oh wow, look at that. Delay, inhibit, require stick low. Ooh. That's new. Hmm. I don't know. Do we want that? Wait, is that the switch you usually use? Yeah, switch H. Yep. Yeah, okay. That's the same. Yep. They didn't add any more switches than this. This switch and then these two trims and this. That knob. Okay. Everything else is the same. So require stick low means that if you have the stick up and you're in throttle cut. Oh, I don't know if I have the throttle cut saved. So if I go to monitor, see how it's not working? Now when I uncut the throttle, see, it has to be low, then it works, okay? I'm not sure if I like that. Also, this stick is a little bit, little bit looser than I'm used to. I may need to tighten that up just a hair on this one. Throttle cuts on, see? Now watch what happens when the throttle cut comes off. It stays down mm. until you return to zero and stay and then toggle it off and then back on. Ooh. I don't like that at all. That no. could be that could be very scary. So throttle cut. No, there's also a delay. You can do a 0 0.25, 0 0.5, one second. 
I don't think I want any of that crap. Maybe if you were new and you had never used throttle cut and stuff before. See how it comes live immediately? Yeah. Now the other thing is we've already calibrated these sticks and I noticed this problem. I don't want to call it necessarily a problem as much as just you want to be aware of it. All the way at the bottom is negative 96. All the way at the top is, is positive 97, okay? That should be 100. And if you push hard, it goes to 100, okay? And if you push hard, it goes to 100. You see what I'm talking about? Mm. Like I'm, do that, camera crew. See? Like it's oh. hitting the end stop. Yeah. So just be aware of that. Mm. Now, where did that Allen wrench go? It was right here. Yep. Okay, so I wanna talk about this for just a second. I'm trying to remember how this is done. There's actually a little access here. Okay, so I don't know. I don't know what that does, but there's a switch in there. And I'm not sure what that does. I'm sure the manual probably talks about it a lot. Oh, that's, that's how you might be able to set up the, the different modes, I wonder. But there's definitely something in there. I don't know what that does. I want to make this so that it's a little bit tighter. And I want it to, whoops, I hit the trim. Yeah, see this? There's like a middle setting. I don't know what that does. See that? So it was over there. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious what that does. If any of you guys know, leave it in the comments. Um, but really what I want to do is I want to tighten this. So I'm going to grab a screwdriver. And I know this is kind of getting mixed up with our setup for the P51. But I noticed this right when I started fiddling with it on the I don't remember which one of these. It's not changing anything there. I don't know if that does anything at all. See, there's a screw right there too. Nope, I'm not feeling like it's changing anything. Because I changed it on another transmitter, but I forget where it is. There is a place where you can actually adjust the tightness of this bite. There's a bite that holds, holds this play up. I don't know where it is, so we're going to pause and find that out right now. Okay, so watch this. I don't know if you guys can tell. Show them, camera crew. You can, you can hear it. Like you can also tell because yeah. watch when you let, let go for a sec. Yeah. It's a lot more resistance. It's a lot more resistance. But then it also stays in those defined points. Okay, so as you get totally tight on that position, now when you loosen this a bunch, you're going to notice, feel it now. Oh, See, there's yeah. There's almost no depressions. Yeah. There's detents there's... along the range. There's nothing here. Some people like that and some people don't. See? I don't. I can feel it again. Yeah, I can hear it. Do you like that? See? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a lot. It's very definitive. But I don't know if I want the, I just want smooth, but I want more resistance. Okay, but can you get all the way to 100 now? No, it doesn't change any of that. Okay. I just want this to have more resistance in general. Mm. And there's two screws and I'm just trying each of them. So we're going to pause it and tell you what they're actually supposed to do. Okay, so this is the throttle ratchet adjustment. The bumps. So it disappears. Then this is the throttle tension. Now I've already torqued it all the way down and I can't go anymore but I don't feel any change, so I'm gonna loosen it a bunch now and see if it tight tightens it at all. I'm not feeling really any change at all. It feels fairly loose, but I mean, it's like way loose now. I think it's just, you're gonna have a combination therein. You guys can hear it now. Mm -hmm. 
So I think I want a little bit of ratchet just so I can kind of feel the differences. Nah, I don't think I want ratchets on the throttle though. Okay, then this is for the left, right. So like your rudder tension. So if I were to tighten this way down, then it would make it real like, that's gonna be more or less. So watch, when I tighten it a bunch, it's like incredibly high feedback. Like it goes straight to the center. Now that mean that might be a nice feature for people that are new to the flying radio controlled airplanes and they have a tendency to want to over control the rudder. Okay. Mm. You can get that with Expo. Now people flying helis are not going to want that. You're going to want to have a little bit more of that. So I'm disappointed. I'd like to tighten this a little bit more and I'm not sure if maybe there's something I can do differently. but I'm tightening, you can see how much I've turned this. So that's like all the way, I feel like I'm at the end stop and I don't wanna break it, but feel that. It still moves free, but it's not yeah. very much tension. Okay, and then nothing. I don't think I like the ratchets. I, feel like I don't think I like the ratchet. Well, some, some people like it. Yeah. You can do ratchets on this too, right? Cause there's ratchets and tension here. And this, when I mean, yeah, you figured it out, but it's in the manual on page six. Yeah, so I've got this relaxed a little bit back too. So, anyway, the moral of the story is if you want to tighten the tension, it's the inside screw that's going to make this a little bit harder to move up and down, it's going to resist movement and hold position better. And then, if you loosen it, it's going to let it be more free. So if you drop the transmitter, okay, so if you drop the transmitter, it's such that it could actually change your throttle position too, if it's loose enough. Mm. Okay. A couple different thoughts. Sorry. That was a lot of detail on that, but I mean, I guess if you guys are watching our videos, that's probably cause you like it. <laughs> so, all right, back to the next step. So now we need to go into the servo setup. They ask us to select the aircraft type. Actually, we'll go to that next because we have the throttle cut now. Oh, actually, let's show the people what that looks like. We'll go over to monitor mode. So here's throttle cut now. So throttle cuts on. When it's off, the throttle goes immediately live. Now it's off, full throttle, no throttle, full throttle, no throttle. Okay, now it's down. All right, so a lot of fine tuning, guys. This is an, a very important tool. If you're not setting these tools up to your liking, you're not gonna like them. So just take the time, set it up now. All right, so we gotta do the wing type. So we'll go down to system setup. We'll jump into system setup. We're gonna go to aircraft type. We're gonna change the wing to one aileron, one flap, as per the manual. It says one aileron, one flap. And we're gonna go next, and we're gonna change this ugly picture. And let's just show the people what you got to work with here with the latest and greatest firmware update. I mean, technically this would be, what is it? There's a P51, but let's just go all the way over. There's probably quite a few more now than there were. It doesn't look like it. Yeah, there's a, few, there's a Fox. I don't think there was a Fox before. Okay, so P51. Okay, clear the timer because I don't want that thing to go off annoyingly at the wrong time. I feel like everything is pretty good. Everything is pretty good except for I over tension the left right. I want these to feel more similar. This is totally subjective, guys. Okay, I feel better now. All right, so then uh, what else do we need to do? We need to reverse the uh, gear servo. So we can jump into the servo setup, travel, highlight it, and then go to reverse and gear. We need to switch. Okay, so now it's at minus 100. And what else? Now we need to set up the flap mode so we can click and scroll down to flap system. It's inhibited. I'm gonna set it to this switch, which is B. The manual calls for it position zero, 100% flaps. I do notice that this is a little bit over tension. That'll wear in a little bit with time. 
Okay, the elevator correction does not show up in this manual. I don't know why they aren't showing elevator correction. I'm gonna correct them like 10 and 15. We'll adjust that later at accordingly. So they're saying minus 90. Later, I'm gonna more than likely adjust that to, nine, to minus 100. And the speed, we're gonna set to two seconds. That's gonna help everything to work um, over the course of two seconds. So the, the swing from minus 100 to zero is half of that, and then from zero to plus 100 is the other half. So if you're only swinging from 50 to 50 minus, then that's only gonna take one second to accomplish. Because the assumption is two seconds from minus to plus, or plus to minus, or whatever, okay? So that two seconds, we're gonna realize um, all but 5% uh, of it, okay? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So as I click, you can watch in the monitor. Did you see it switch? That was weird. Okay, so I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna go out of that menu, scroll over to the monitor. That's weird. You see that? Now watch this. I'm going to show you what I did wrong. Under flap setting, see how it says speed? When that was selected, I want it two seconds on all positions. So in this position, I also want it to be two seconds. Okay? Two seconds, two seconds, and then I want that to be two seconds. That's weird. That I just accidentally weird. did that, guys. So you notice that it works, it works, and it works. Typically, I would not be fiddling with that stick at that time, but I didn't know. I guess you can. So that's actually pretty cool. Guys, I'm telling you there are some powerful things in this firmware. You can do some crazy mixes that you would almost never think about, and you're probably not ever going to mess with them. But that's just one case in point. Okay, now let's talk about dual rates and expo for a minute. Clear the timer. Jump into the dual rates and expo. There's three axes of control, aileron, elevator, and rudder, okay? So ailerons control roll, elevator controls pitch, and rudder controls yaw, okay? All three are set up the same. In my world, I switch to switch F. On a DX8, you could actually have ailerons, elevator, and rudder if you wanted. I'm not gonna do that. So on position zero, we're gonna have virtually nothing on ailerons. On position one, we're gonna have the median point where I expect to fly at, which is gonna be 10. And then on the top setting, we're gonna go all the way up to 20 and we're gonna drop down the rates to 90. This is gonna give me my dual rates and expo on one switch for ailerons. Then I'm gonna switch to elevator. I'm gonna assign it to the same switch. Switch zero is gonna be virtually no elevator. About double and then about double again. And we're, whoops, we're going to drop down the rates to 90, okay? See how that works? Then we're going to go over to rudder. We're going to switch that to switch F. We're going to have virtually nothing. Then we're going to have a little bit more, and we're going to have a lot. And we're going to drop the rate on the top setting down to 90, okay? So what this means is I will take off in the middle setting... I'll fly around, I'll see if I like it. If it feels a little bit too touchy, then I can give it a little bit more uh, deadening of the sticks. And if it's not touchy enough and I can't get the thing to control, then I will come out of the middle setting and go to the top setting. Then when I land, I'll make that my new middle setting and adjust accordingly until we're comfortable. Usually I don't need to mess with it. Usually it's fine with my default settings. That would be alternative to what they recommend in the manual which is to set high rates to 100% and low rates to 70%. And that's something you can do if you choose to do so. More power to you. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay. They do sometimes talk about Expo on this page, incidentally. Okay. They didn't in this case. Okay. All right, cool. So that means we're ready to bind. So what we need to do is we need to have our throttle cut on, sticks in the condition that we intend to have them in, Okay, so flaps fully retracted or not deployed. Okay, flaps up, throttle cut on. Uh, this is a new switch too, is it? No, we had that switch before on the DX or the NX6. 
Okay, so we're gonna go into the bind procedure. We can close this manual for now. The bind procedure is super simple, but it's easy to screw up. It is easy, but it's not, it's not easy if you haven't done it before. So the first thing you wanna do is get all your loose items off of the counter, because if you have loose items on the counter, you might pick them up with the thrust <laughs> from the propeller, okay? So the other thing too is you may wanna take your propeller off for this step. If you decide to do that, I don't blame you. It is probably a good idea if you're not 100% comfortable with doing this. The other thing is you can also position the plane in such a way that you're safe. Some planes, however, have a propeller that you must get your arms in and around to set up. And so it is a reality of life. Like I said earlier, people get cut, but just don't be that guy or girl or woman or whatever. Okay, so okay. take off your canopy. You need to be prepared. The transmitter turns off at this point. If you're at a flight field, make sure that nobody else is binding their plane right now, okay? Because they could inadvertently bind to your plane, okay? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna plug this in. You're gonna protect yourself, camera crew, by not being in front of the prop. Thank you. So this plugs in here. Oops. Did we do that wrong? We have to press and hold the button first, don't we? So the, the switch, switching on safe select is insert bind plug and then remove bind plug, okay? In this case, you can also press the button, okay? I don't know why they don't show with the pushing of the button. Is it on the next page? Because it usually has both. Yeah, it doesn't show it. Well, that's fine. I know how to do it. So I'm just going to press down the button while powering the plane, and then I'm gonna let go, right? Or do I keep holding? You have to keep holding to bind the safe select because you need no, to No, that's a switching off safe select. See, I'm supposed to let go. See, install, power it up, remove, and then do it. So they evidently switched that, which is good because that's the way it should be. Okay, so I'm gonna press and hold this button while powering. Now I'm gonna let go. There's a flashing light in here. Show the people the flashing light. I'm in a safe spot. I'm powering while holding the bind button. Letting go of the power button while holding the bind button. It says binding. It's attempting to bind and I don't think we bound. Okay? So what do you do in this condition? Unplug it. You let go. You let go of the bind button. You get yourself in a safe position then bind failed. Okay, so I unplug this. I'm gonna do the same procedure. I have to shut off my transmitter. Sometimes if you're too close, it won't work. You have to be right. so far away. But we're trying to film it so you guys can see. I want the plane level when I bind, okay? I'm pressing with my pinky the bind button, okay? While I'm pressing the bind button, okay, which is on top of the Air 631, I am precariously attempting to plug in the power. Once I'm plugged in, I can let go. There's a flashing light on the receiver, which indicates it's in bind mode. You can also tell all the control surfaces are in weird positions. I'm gonna press and hold this, then press this until I see it wake. It says binding. I'm gonna try to get, there we go. I can let go. Ooh, that only, that only danced once, which means that we only have, it's doing the auto configuration. We do not have safe select active. And here's how you can tell. Unplug the plane, plug back in the plane, watch for two dances. That was one dance. So we did not do it right. So this time we have to do it a little different. I'm gonna turn off the transmitter. So that's for AS3X only. I am going to press and hold the button, press and hold it, and then I'm going to plug this in. Okay, while I'm powering this, I'm going to press all these buttons, binding. Now I'm going to let go. Two times through the dance. Yep. So the AS3X dance. That's twice. 
Okay, I'm going to show you again. Show them a close up, camera crew. Okay, we're already bound. Plug in the battery. That's twice. That's how you know that Safe Select is active. Okay, throttle cuts on. The very first thing you do is you test your throttle. Okay, I know I'm in command of this plane. Throttle is not working. That's what we want because we have the throttle cut on. Now I'm going to test the throttle cut. Throttle cuts off. And we have power. The motor's going in the right direction. A little bit of throttle. Throttle cuts on. Everything's working. Okay, so now I feel confident I'm safe on this plane. Um, not to be confused with safe select. So now we're going to test for safe select status. I'm going to make sure that battery's all the way plugged in. Goodness gracious, that one was really hard to get plugged in. Do you need to do that elevator clevis before? Yeah, the elevator clevis will come in in just a second. Okay. See, the, the ailerons are trying to level the plane. It's trying to find the fastest route. So, because we're in safe select, I need to fix that before I can fix the elevator because mm -hmm. safe will attempt to right the airplane and the elevator is one of those axes it's controlling. So as a result, I need to fix that. But I want to put the gear down. Gear are now up. You heard it cycle. Now they come down beautifully, I might add. Look at that. Up, down. I want the gear down like this so that that switch is in this condition. You may not want it that way, and if that's the case, just go ahead and set it up the way you like. Okay. I'm checking the control surfaces for direction of travel as we're doing this. The elevator is up, down, left, right on the rudder, and steerable nose gear or tailwheel, either on roll left, roll right. So everything is working in the right direction, but you'll notice that the elevator is not perfectly level. And as I lift it, you see what happens? It goes up, and when I lower it, it goes down. And there's also a limited amount of throw when you're in safe select. So we need to now make a designation for safe select. I want my safe select switch to be on switch D in this case. So I'm gonna go over to monitor mode. I'm gonna move the switch and you'll notice nothing changes. There's not a conditional change anywhere on there. So that means we have to click, scroll down to system setup, disconnect the RF, note that things go into fail safe. Then we can go down to channel assign and you'll notice that there are some assignments down here. Looks like nothing is assigned to auxiliary one at this point, because that's flaps. So auxiliary two is on auxiliary two, and auxiliary three is on auxiliary three. So I can go back into that, and auxiliary two, I'm gonna make that assignment to switch D, okay? Now when I walk out, let things initiate. Ailerons, elevator, rudder. Now watch this, over here, Auxiliary two is now controlled by this. Now, you don't want to use one of the lower channels for safe select because you don't want to be using the rudder and have safe come on and off, okay? Now, I don't know if you can even do that, but if you could, you wouldn't want to do it. You can sometimes share safe with the flaps if you're using a DX6 that is a true six channel receiver or transmitter rather. But if you're using NX7, or excuse me, NX6, that's actually seven channel, you should be able to go ahead and assign that to auxiliary two as well. Okay, so I'm not even touching auxiliary three, which is way up here. I'm gonna show you how to make your assignment for safe select right now. So sticks down and in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let go of the sticks. Safe is either on or off. Throttle cut is tested because I'm going in here where my hand could get cut. Flip the plane upside down. Safe is working. Safe is off. And I've never given it throttle, so the AS3X isn't working. Now, AS3X doesn't start until you give it throttle, but I have my throttle cut off. Throttle cuts off. Over 25%, throttle cuts on and tested. AS3X is working. So when I lift the rudder, or when I when I move the plane looking down, I can see the rudder favoring to the that side, and I can see it favoring to that side. Now I'm looking at the elevator. Up, down, looking at the aileron. Can't tell, not enough movement. Yeah, it's going up and down, okay? So all the axis of control, the primary control axis for yaw, 
uh, elevator for pitch, and then ailerons for roll. They're all working in the correct directions as it pertains to AS3X. Safe is also working when it's working. This is AS3X. I want it to be the other way. I want it to be up here. How do we do that? Sorry, folks. Memory ran out. So we wanted to switch the safe select designation so that this is AS3X and this is safe. And right now this is safe and this is AS3X. Okay, so click into the function list, servo setup, click the travel, switch over to reverse. And then this is doing auxiliary two, so we can go over and then switch that. Walk out of the menu, make sure everything's working, test the throttle cut, it is tested. Safe select is off with that switch on auxiliary two up. With the switch down, this is how you can see if safe is on. The easiest way is to watch the ailerons trying to get the plane to go to the fastest route to home, which is this. Safe is off. So the last two steps we need to do is mechanical trim on the rudder if necessary. Looks like it needs to come over just a hair. Show the people. Mm -hmm. That's movement. Okay. So I'm just going to lean this up, put the prop on the ground, or in this case, the counter. I'm going to pull down this little rubber collar. And then I'm going to use my fingernail to catch this and pull it down. Okay. Then I'm going to undo this clevis by lifting it up in this case. And I need it to go over just a hair. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and unscrew it one half to one turn. So there's one half, there's one turn. Okay, now let's see if that's enough. So now I've just got to take this doohickey and ram it in the hole. Okay, so it's clicked. Slide this out. Kind of hear the servos resisting a little bit. And now that's really close. I would say maybe another half. Think so? Yep. Just one more half. Okay. So I want it to go out, so I'm going to unscrew it one half. So it's neutral, so it's square. And then let's see if that looks better. You know what? I think we're probably in the middle of that step. Because mm -hmm. it seems to be your direction yeah. now, and before it was my direction. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually going to err on the side of I'd rather have it pushing downward if it's possible. So I'll go one half back, slip that through, snap it, and then slide that down. And that, that yeah, it's, I think you're right. Yeah, it's a little I bit better that better. way. So y'all left, y'all right. Beautiful little details like this, so cool. Okay, so now the elevator is the other thing. If you're in safe select, watch what happens to the elevator. There's safe select, there's not safe select. There's safe select. It's gonna attempt to correct the position of the airplane to this position, mm -hmm. okay? So it's gonna to try to bring it to this position. Not this position, but this position, okay? So we're going to lean the plane forward. We're going to come out of safe so that that stops moving. And then I need to correct this mechanically so that that's level in line with the seam is a good place to look at. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to pull this doohickey out of that doohickey. The clevis out of the control horn. There is words that mean what these <laughs> things are. We knew what you meant. Okay, so I'm using this rubber on the base of that clevis, and that gives me something to hang on to. I'm going to screw this in, probably like four or five. I just want you to see how vulnerable this foam can be. I'm denting it with my fingernail. Now, I didn't scrape it, but if your fingernails are long or sharp or gangly, be careful because you'll actually rip up your foam. I'm serious, camera crew. That's why I don't do that. So the outside hole, right? Neat. I yes. never refer to the manual because yeah, I, I can't check. remember. Okay, so it was supposed to be the outside hole. Now, you'll notice it's not lined up perfectly. I'm going to move the elevator. So the rationale behind this is if I have to move that elevator, you can see that it's not lined up. Okay, so we're not quite there. We're really close. So I need to go in even further. So that means that as I twist this clevis, it's going to screw on to the end of this linkage. Okay. There's another half, another half, so that's one, that's one and a half, that's two. 
that's two and a half. So now we're going to try this again. All right, that looks like I might have overshot, possibly. Mm, I don't know. Yeah, that's down a little bit. That's Just up. Just okay. barely. It's down by half a turn. Half a turn should do it. So I need to bring this back out. So I'm going to turn the volume down just one half. Whoa, that's kind of bound up a little bit as I try to turn it. There we go. If you ever have problems with this wanting to spin at the other end, you can tell it's trying to unscrew from the other side. Grab it with pliers and then you can move it. Mm. So you grab the shaft here with pliers. Mm. I know. It sounds painful to me too. Okay, so we're gonna stick that doohickey in the other doohickey and then snap it this time. Okay, now. Mm. Yeah. That looks pretty perfect. Yep, that looks good. Give him a shot from the other side too. I just want you to notice, folks at home, that there is a very, very, very small deviation on the left and right side. Do you notice it? Mm hmm So I would say that this one is even perfectly, and then this one over here would be down half. Yeah. A third of a degree, just barely at all. It's never going to be appreciable on this plane, but I just wanted to acknowledge that that was happening. So aileron roll left, roll right, elevator up, down, roll left, or excuse me, yaw right, yaw left. Obviously, I can tell that the wheel's going in the same direction as well. And we do have pretty, pretty, pretty close. We're going to be kind of favoring a little bit to the right. It is possible to mechanically trim this. It is a real pain in the neck though. I'm gonna show you how to do it right now, but we're not gonna do it because I don't care that much. It's not gonna be that critical. You're gonna get off of that tail wheel real quick in this plane. Okay, if you wanna try to come over my right shoulder, I think you'll be able to see. Throttle cut is on and tested, by the way. So this is your, this is your rudder, okay? So there's two linkages that go back. One of them, is going to be the steerable tail wheel. One of them is going to be the actual rudder. So the only way you can adjust that is to actually loosen this set screw here, the set screw there. Mm -hmm. Can you get down a little closer? Okay, perfect. So that set screw gets loosened and then whichever rod is controlling the wheel gets adjusted in or out without adjusting the other. Oh. That's why I say it's a pain in the neck. Now, historically, when I make adjustments to trim on taxi wheels, it comes to kind of somewhere between a waste of time and a moot point because that is gonna get beat up a little bit. And so after first couple of flights, if you have a rough landing or something like that, it'd, be, it'd make better sense to wait a couple of flights and just see how it does. Because the first thing you do with a plane like this is you're gonna, you're gonna give it throttle and you're gonna get that tail wheel off the ground. Mm -hmm. And then you're gonna, you're gonna get up the speed and then you're gonna, you're gonna roll and go fly and do your thing. So without further ado, guys, that video was extremely long. We know, I would say that it'll never happen again, except that you know our channel by now. We really appreciate you guys. Definitely check in the link in the description below. Suppose there was a plane you wanted to buy that we didn't have a direct link to. We always have our master links, Horizon Hobby, Tower Hobbies. Um, what do we have? We have, uh, into the AM, we've got Into the AM, we've got Banggood, we've got Amazon. We've got all these different companies like the Magic Home for this furniture or the Cat Tree. Um, these are all different supporters of our channel. They have supported us just like you've supported us. So that's part of the reason why, Horizon Hobby, of course, obviously. So if you go to Horizon Hobby, you, if, you, if you don't see what, we, what you're looking for down there, no big deal, just click on the master link, follow it, you can get whatever plane you want. Um, and we really appreciate you guys following the links. We try to link to the specific plane at the top just so it's convenient for you. And the specific battery we used, um, which in this case we used a 4S 2200 30C for testing. We're gonna try to do a 50C and a 30C uh, Gen 2 packs. Now the Gen 2 packs, I've had a lot of people ask me, you know, is it worth the extra money? I don't know. I'm not convinced on Gen 2 yet, but I can tell you this. I love the smart packs. They are very good. Because they are so much better, you can get away with having a few less of them. You'll have longer flight times with less downtime with about the same money, which I know you guys are thinking that's impossible, Brian. I've seen the prices on those batteries and they're outrageous. Just buy one and then you'll understand what I'm talking about. 
Now you can charge a smart pack on a dumb um, charger, so just a standard charger, but you can't necessarily charge the Gen 2 packs on a dumb charger. So you need to be aware of that. I'm not trying to mislead anybody. Horizon isn't trying to mislead anybody, but there is a difference in quality between the packs that you were getting and the packs that you are getting. And namely, it has to do with the manufacturing plant that they're built in. So the cells are better, and that is in fact. Now, the reason they're better is because they cost a lot more to make. And when things cost more, they tend to be pretty good. Just like, imagine that you have a country full of billions of people, like China, and lots of them like to eat food because they want to have a life and live. So some plants don't very good take care of their people, and then other plants do because there's a huge, vast difference between plant one at China and plant 43 at China and plant 4,329 in China. There's a lot of them, okay? Just like there's a difference in plants in Iowa, which I go to and I see, there's a huge difference. The quality of workmanship, the quality of skill, the quality of the people that they hire, the cost of the labor, the cost of the raw materials, it all goes into better materials, to the good plants, worse materials to the cheapest. Or the good plants will also follow specs from a company that's okay with selling garbage. And they'll follow specs from a company that won't tolerate it. So there's a reason they're more expensive. I'm not trying to justify a three or four times the price battery, but I am trying to help explain to you that there's a difference. So if you haven't already kind of connected the dots, which I know a lot of you have, those batteries are awesome. We have been very happy with them. And by the way, that's like all the batteries we have, that and then what's in the drawer. Uh, we used to have probably, I don't know, 120 more Boxes. batteries. And yes. they're gone, they're gone because they're just the garbage. They're, they're ruined after a couple of years. So we've been extremely satisfied. Now Gen 2 compared to Gen 1, I'm still not sure. It is very nice when we get ready to fly and it's a nice day and we go and we plug in like 15 batteries at once and we're charging all of them. I don't have to plug in balance leads. That is really nice. But on the flip side, you don't have the balance charge lead, so you can't plug in your voltage alarm. So there's definitely some pros and cons. You have to weigh that. Obviously, the Gen 2s are more expensive, but they will self-discharge and balance better and faster. That's important for when you're flying a high-performance plane. Okay, even though this is an awesome plane and it is performance, it's not a high-performance plane like an SU-20 or SU-30 or rather uh, the F-18, you know, the things that are gonna draw tons of load out of those packs, okay, or heli, okay, or quad. So just remember, this is, this is actually a pretty efficient plane. It flies on low energy or crazy energy, just depends on what you wanna do. This is not exactly a V-1200 is what I'm getting at. <laughs> um, awesome plane, love it, one of my favorites. I still love flying this today just as much as I did when I first started, although I'm a, a lot less scared to fly than when I first started. Um, so definitely follow the links. You'll be helping to support our channel. We also have links for everything else that isn't specifically outlined, and I can't say those items. So um, this plane has been great. I hope you buy one. If you're considering a P-51 in the 1.5 meter scale and you're a newer pilot, stop considering that and get this. It's a lot cheaper. It's a lot easier to fly. You're going to enjoy it more, okay? Take my word for it. I just did a comparison on second thoughts for the FW190 and the P51. They're both great planes. They're very good. That being said, this one's better for a beginner. A lot better. Like the P51 1.5, I wouldn't buy it for you. If you're, if you're a beginner, I wouldn't just don't get it for yourself. Right. Get this. Mm -hmm. If you can't handle this, you're going to immediately crash the P51 1.5. I'm telling you that now. And that's because I want you to be successful because successful RC pilots continue to get more RC planes and they continue to fly and they continue to improve. But an unsuccessful pilot that pushes themselves well beyond their limits will crash and will get devastated and will cry and they will quit. We see it a lot. So we want you guys to have success. We want you to find success. Even if that means you're buying a little bit cheaper item, that's great. Whatever it takes to get you from this to the next one to the next one and work your way through the ranks is what we want you to do. It's very hard as a new pilot to admit to yourself, I'm not quite ready for a plane like that because it's awesome and I see all these guys at the club that have it. Well, you know what? That's life. You gotta work your way through the ranks. 
You got $10 million in the bank, it don't matter. If you don't know how to fly this, you aren't flying the 1.5 meter. It doesn't matter. You can't buy that skill. You have to learn it, which is really cool. That's one of the best things about RC is it's so, um, there, there is, there's definitely absolutely no, um, um, everybody has to learn. Everybody has to learn. There is, uh, there is no cheating. If you are uh, the smartest guy in the class, you may suck at this. You, if you're a full scale pilot, you're like, give me the controls, man. I know how to fly that 747. Okay, here, crash. Yeah, see? Now that being said, all airplanes are not created equal. You're gonna learn that if you watch the channel a little bit. We're here to help you pick the right ones so that you can get the most bang for your buck. And not just because I like Horizon or because I like working with um, you know, Banggood or because I like working with Hobby King on one day or whatever it is, it doesn't matter. We're here to help you spend your RC dollars in the best possible way to get the most maximum enjoyment. The NX-8 is a very economical choice. If you're considering this up against the NX-6, I strongly encourage you to consider the NX-8. This is gonna buy you a longer period of time between now and when you move into something more sophisticated than the NX-6. The NX-6 is awesome if you're on a tight budget and the 40 bucks makes that big of a difference, which I highly doubt it if you're in this level of airplane, but let's just say if you, it, the NX-6 is great. Most of the time you're gonna be fine. If you're a brand new beginner and you just want something that's good, that's gonna get you by for a couple of years, NX-6 is perfect. For 40 bucks more, you can probably get two or three more years of use out of it. And that's realistic, okay? Also, definitely check the link in the description below. And my camera crew has some questions. No, your battery is gonna die. Oh. Well guys, <laughs> with that in closing, thanks for watching. Definitely like, subscribe, click the bell for notifications and come back for more. We promise we won't have any more long videos ever again until the next one.